Hello, Internet, and welcome back to Antiheroes Anonymous, or welcome for the first time if it's your first time joining us. I'm Ethan, and I'm the Dungeon Master for this 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons show! Um, I will have some announcements and a recap for all of you, but before we do that, Nick, if you wouldn't mind starting us off with some player introductions. Sure. Hi, I'm Nick. I play Embers of White Ash, who's sent sold to Hi, I'm Kay. I play Lady Elwyn Amalos, who is a elvish super of the land druid. Hello, my name is Melissa. And I play Charm, who is a Vicrine Ranger. You said it right. Like you. She always says it right. <laughs> Hi, I'm Zach, and I play Vert, the Changeling Armor Artificer. Um, I'm just always impressed he says Armor Artificer without stuttering, because <laughs> I would. Yeah. Uh, okay, uh, those announcements I mentioned. Um, we premiere our episodes on YouTube every Monday at 7 p.m. Pacific time, unless we're taking a break for the holidays or busy schedules or whatnot. Um... Throughout the show, we use a variety of custom items and uh, other custom monsters and creations and things like that, so be aware of that as you're watching. The character portraits, um, at this point, were drawn by multiple artists, so check the description uh, for information on who drew what uh, and where you can find more of their stuff. Um, if you need a refresher on what's going on in the campaign, you can check our campaign wiki at World Anvil. We have a uh, the Story So Far page, which is up to date to this point. Um, other than that, you can check the video descriptions for links and information about everything I mentioned and more, uh, including some links to Black Lives Matter and Stop Asian Hate resources. Uh, other than that, you can follow us on Twitter at AntiHeroesAnon, and we just hope you enjoy the show, share with your friends, and come back to watch some more. Uh, so with that out of the way, let's go ahead and roll the intro video. Welcome back. Previously on Antiheroes Anonymous, uh, the Silver Seekers hold the deed to a keep in the city of Amberhearth, which it turns out has been overrun with giant ants. Um, together with Night Mantis, a mysterious warrior loyal to Vert, and Charm, a beekeeper from the Spellscar Desert, the Seekers must now save what is left of the city. Elwyn managed to infiltrate the nest as a uh, wild shaped giant ant herself in order to meet the queen and her advisor, Snork, a tentacle-faced kobold. Uh, when the team went down in full force to finish things, they found a grotesque creature infesting the queen's head. Um, working together, they managed to remove it, uh, but the group itself is not quite out of danger yet. So that is where we're going to pick up to, uh, today. Uh, it's been a little while, so I'll remind you. The group of you are down deep in the earth, um, surrounded by... Uh, pretty much pitch blackness, um, standing amongst the large eggs of unhatched ants in the queen's chamber. Um, you have finished off the queen's guards, um, and a massive uh, web spell of dripping honey <laughs> guards the entrance to the room, um, where uh, your friend Night Mantis is holding off any reinforcements from coming to the queen's aid. The um, kobold, the, the tentacle-faced kobold creature Snork is unconscious, uh, stuck in the dripping honey web. Um, and the rest of you are kind of crowded around this massive red carapace queen ant uh, and the black, um, red-eyed, multiple-legged, 
hood-like creature that you just forcibly, Elwyn just forcibly pulled off of this thing's head. Um, we are going to drop right back into initiative. Um, starting with Elwyn, we left off kind of in the middle of your turn. You still have a bonus action and a move, according to the note I left for myself. You'd think I would have spent the last two weeks trying to figure out what to do. <laughs> And how I was going to use it. You've pretty much just pulled the hood off of this creature. And you're basically, I mean, do you hold on to it? Do you let go of it? What's it doing? It is just writhing and struggling against your grip. Um... Uh, I will, what is it, shift to Z <laughs> to show it? Show Eww. the token. Eww. Oh, it's still loading? Yeah, it's trying to load. <clears throat> there it is. It popped up on me. Not as ugly as I thought it would be. It looks like a witch hat or something. It does. <laughs> with tentacles. Um, Happy Halloween, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think I'm just gonna like, hold it in my hands, and I'm just like, ah! And I look around at everyone like, oh god, <laughs> what now? And uh, what does the, what does the um, ant, the giant ant, the queen, what is she up to? What is she doing? Um. Let's see. Embers had stunned oh. the hood. So the hood is, I think, technically still stunned, but the queen would have then been released from that effect. They were kind of merged together as one, so she was stunned as well. She's probably reeling back um, and looking around the room. Okay. You can tell she's noticing, you know, the dead ants that are in the room. Um, it's hard to tell what she'll be doing. Does she look pretty rough? No, not at all. You guys have barely hurt her. Right. I mean, I know she took some damage from the, from the, um, from the hood. <sighs> okay. Um, well, I think then I'll use my bonus action to cast Healing Word on Torrent. Because he's looking rough. Yes, he is. Mm -hmm. Um, at just a first level. Because I'm running out of spell slots. Actually, Torin. Oh yeah, he is the one yeah. who's at six. Yep. One, one D four plus. Embers is also looking pretty rough. I yeah, but Torin's got not like a, single a digit, digits. Yeah. All right. Sorry. Let me get this um D four out. There we go. Nope, that's not a D four. That's a D eight. That would be twice as many hit points as I can get with this spell. <laughs> How come the D fours are always the hardest ones to find? <laughs> Here we go. Oh, a four. So, eight. eight. Okay. Uh, he gets eight hit points. And I just say, like, uh, what now? Are you, hang in there. And, uh, I'm gonna, am I within the queen's melee range? Uh, I kind of had to move you all back off of the queen because you were kind of partially on her. Mm -hmm. Um, so, no, not at the moment. Then I'll just take, like, Nah, I'll stay put. I'll stay put. Okay. I'll stay put. Um. And that's my turn. That's all I'll do. It would. Yes, it would next be the brain hood, but it is stunned by embers, if I recall correctly. And I'll just maybe I'll just say to Charm, like, Charm, can you can you tell the queen everything's all right and we're on her side? Okay. Yeah. That's it. Sorry. Okay. Um. Does it do anything? Does it make a save, or it's just until the it's end just of the until the end of my next? So it doesn't have to do anything. It's just stunned. Let me make sure it doesn't have any bonus actions. It can still use those, yeah. right? Yeah. No reactions or actions. It has no bonus actions. Okay. Um, then Night Mantis will, uh, unseen by all of you, take out some of these ants. <laughs> Night Mantis is the real MVP of this fight. <laughs> Like to a nice restaurant or something? Yep. <laughs> um, a restaurant. A rest <laughs> oh my god. Oh no. What is happening? <laughs> uh, Torin, uh, kind of unsure what to do about the queen, um, but having this hood within range will make two attacks. Um, does he get advantage? Well, I guess it's stunned, so he yeah, gets he advantage mm -hmm. anyway, but I was going to say, does it count as being grappled by me? Because I'm holding it. <laughs> Grappled yeah, it would count it as grappled. Yeah. 
That's um, right. Restrained would give us Restrained bonus. Okay. Alright. It's AC is not terribly high. Actually. <laughs> well, actually. Technically. Uh-huh. That's honest. <laughs> um, I rolled two threes on the first attack, so the first one was a miss. <laughs> nice. <laughs> but the second one hit. Um, eight slashing damage. Okay. Uh, Torin's one attack that gets through, like, cuts a chunk of this thing off, Ooh. and like, it does not look like this thing is very physically strong. Great. It's removed from its host. Great. Uh, Vert. Yeah. Um, now that Ellen is fine again and doing things, I'm going to also attack this hood. So I'll take two attacks also. She's just holding it like, oh, oh, oh my god! That arm blank. <laughs> it's like flailing its legs me. in your face. <laughs> so that's... <laughs> one for you, and one for you, and one for you. <laughs> it's like Plus. everyone's trying to hit a pinata that you're 21 to hit? Yeah. <laughs> 21 to hit? Yeah. I was scared to put it down, but I didn't want it to fly 11 away. 11 damage for the first hit, and this is um, thunder damage. That makes a difference. Doesn't have any resistance to that. So how much did you say? Eleven. Eleven. Okay. Um, this is with the the gauntlet. Yeah, thunder gauntlet. One gauntlet uh, plunges into this thing, and there's like the echoing of thunderous sound, and it just like, and more pieces of it fall off. It's like barely holding together now. All right, well, let's I'll finish it off. You punch. That's a fifteen to hit. That hits. Okay, and that is eight thunder damage. How do you want to destroy this yes! thing? Yeah, I want it to just explode. Oh, not all over me! <laughs> no. Oh, how about, how about, how about outwards away from me? How about? I guess I would be all over <laughs> ears then, based off my position. Uh huh. That's fine. So it just like explodes outwards away from her, and just like. Yeah, the like. Oh, oh sorry. Flash yeah, black yeah, kind sorry, of rubbery. Yeah, yeah, chunks yeah. of it just fly black back onto embers. It doesn't seem to have like <laughs> blood or anything like that, um, but like pieces of its legs hit you in the face. Oh my god! Splatting gross. Sorry. One of its eyeballs just like She's splats the against the cave wall. She's casting when they get surprised, and you leap like four feet in the air. <laughs> 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 Your tail is like really. <laughs> yeah, all of the hair starts like... spitting. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! That's funny. So that's my action. Uh-huh. Um, I don't really have a bonus action I want to use. Um, I guess I'll just end my turn there. Are you going to take care of it? I was going to let her out to the garage. We have dogs in the room again. It's almost not good. You want to go to the woods? Okay, let's just play out too. Go, dogs, go. Go, go, go. Mush. Okay. <laughs> uh, Charm, you're up next. Okay, Charm is going to settle up a little closer to the queen have a little conversation now that she can. Okay. Um, the queen is looking around, and since you can understand her, you can hear that she's going, What? What is going on? What is this? My guards! And she's looking at the dead ants around the room. They're not both dead, right? They're both dead. Oh, they're both dead. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah, Antoinette and Antony. No, not Antoinette. Antoinette was the queen. Um... Antony and Chantel. Chantel, yeah, yeah. they're both I They're thought... both dead in the corner. One of them was like, I'm sure they're people? both dead. Yeah, I think it's... Okay, alright. <clears throat> what do you say to the queen? Okay, so I will go and put, put one of my uh, arms on her back. Your royal majesty, you've been controlled by this strange uh, creature that now just exploded all over this spurry feline. <laughs> what, what is it? What's the last thing you remember? By who? We think it's by that little kobold that's been pretending to be your friend. Oh, ah, uh, did she? Yes, yes, Master Snork. Yes, he he cared for me quite well. And then she's her eyes alight on his body. Oh goodness! Is he dead? Uh, well, it doesn't look pretty in here, but we defended you as best we could. I think you know that we're all trying to be your friend, but we don't know how much of our of his influence got through to you. Yeah, she's um she's looking around the room and she's hearing your words and kind of backing up a little bit. Can you make for me 
a persuasion check. Or, I guess an animal handling would work in huh. this case. Whichever one is better for you. It fell off. So that's a five. A five? Oh. Okay. Um, she takes in the room and says, No! No! He was good to me! He was good to me and you you murdered him! Uh, and it looks like she's not at all calm yet. So. Uh, it was a good try, though. Okay, so I will uh, telepathically send a message to Elwyn saying, Well, I tried. <laughs> Helpful. <laughs> uh, okay. You did your best. Anything else you want to do on your turn? Uh, I would say you could use your action. I, that doesn't have to take an action. Um, is there anything else in here that needs killing? I think I'll then I'll make my way back out to help uh, Night Mantis. Okay. Uh... Um, the web still there? They are. The queen is going to try and bite at you as you run away. Okay. I rolled an 18 on the dice. Mm. Um, yep. That hit. Let's see. Yes, so that's uh, 8 bludgeoning damage as she grapples you. Uh, and you are stuck in her mandibles, unable to actually move that far. Okay. I'm grappling with that. Okay. Um, then the queen gets her turn. Um, she has charm. Hmm. I don't think she has to use the bite and then the sting. She could probably switch up the order. She'll try to sting Charm. Um, that's another hit. Uh, for 8 piercing damage. Uh, and you're not going to be able to... Even with half damage from the poison damage, um, you would not be able to... You don't seem to have the hit points, I don't think. Yeah, somebody helps me. I'm down to 5. Leave now. Uh... So actually, could you make the Constitution the saving throw? We'll see how it goes. Because her sting has some poison on it. Woo, that's 18. 18. So it's a 19 total. That passes, um, mm -hmm. which reduces the poison down to 11. Oh. So I guess, yeah, you're out either way. Yeah, I'm down. Um... And then she will bite at Vert. Yeah. And it gets a natural 20! Um, it's two ones on the dice, so that's great. Uh, you take less than you would take from a normal hit. <laughs> For six bludgeoning damage, and you're um, grappled by her. Alright, there goes my temp HP. Uh, okay, and that's her turn. It's my first damage I actually took. <laughs> the soldier ants and worker ants continue trying to get past Night Mantis. Night Mantis will take some damage there. Um, let's see. Um, Night Mantis calls from the hallway, Guys! I'm not going to be able to hold them off from here much longer! Uh, back up to embers. Okay. I'm going to uh, feed uh, Charm Potion of Healing. What's your action on that? I don't want to hurt the queen. <laughs> I don't have anybody. There's nothing else in here to fight. Yeah. Fair um, it's a GTFO. I guess the mm -hmm. web would go down do? since Charm is unconscious. It's yeah. awesome. Yeah, but we got a long way to go, and we gotta get uh, yeah, so snork with us. Yeah, or dash with snork, carrying snork. Yeah, that's true. I don't know how we uh, We're like thousands of feet down, right? 
I think charm is our best way out of here to get yeah. the queen. Yeah. So you can All right. off. So yeah, I'm gonna. Yep. Two d four. Actually, I do need some d fours. <laughs> Rich, importantly. <laughs> Someone will have them. All of my d fours are in my bag. Uh, five plus two, so yeah, seven hit points back. That's quite good for a human section. Yeah. Um, and then I guess... I think that's it for me. Okay. Uh, the layer actions... Besides just saying to Charm, uh, you really need to get this queen, but can you can you do something, please? Um, let's see. Uh, soldier ants came last time, so a couple more worker ants will come. I can select them. Come on. Um, so these, they appear over here. Um, got the hole upward. Uh, and then Elwyn, you're up. Um, okay, I'm going to go around to around here. I'm going to touch Charm. Ch touch her arm. Say it. You have to give it another try. I believe I believe you can do it, and I'm going to cast Guidance on you. Um, and with my bonus action, at the same time, I'll give you another Healing Ward. Give you a little bit more HP. It's another burst level one. I'm going to put my teeth away. Okay, I got it. I think it's just right here on the top of the bag. Oh, another four! So... Wow. That's uh eight more hit points. Thank you. You're you have to do it. If you don't, we're dead. Brain hoods unconscious. No pressure. Yeah. Um, no pressure. Night mantis. Are you out of uh ball chips? Sure am. Okay. Great. Yep. Good. Not without a short rest anymore. Um we'll just say the queen. Can you give us an hour? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> an hour. I just need a, short, a little nap. I'm real tired. Torin looks to the group and says, "So we're not attacking this thing." No. no. Don't touch her. She's. All right. So he sheaths his sword and kind of backs away, with his hands up, trying to look non-threatening. Uh, Bert. Um. Well, I am restrained. Can I take the help action and help charm with this? Yeah. Instrument? How do you want to do that? <laughs> he reaches out <laughs> and pets <her. laughs> I mean, just putting your weapon away, maybe. No, I mean, just like. You have your gauntlet, right? You just yeah. Be yeah. Non -threatening. Just try and look non threatening and. Hmm. That works, I think, for the yeah, help action. Yeah, I don't yeah. know what else I can really do. Kind of look non-threatening, purposefully not making any aggressive mo <clears throat> movements. John. Right. You got advantage and guidance. No uh, pressure. And I'm still restrained. You're not. Nope. nope. I'm restrained. Yep, oh. it switched to biting bird. Oh, okay. Okay. So, I'll try one more. Traitors! Murderers and traitors! Uh, what do you say? Um, your majesty, you can see we are all trying to protect you. We are not your enemies. Please believe me. You would be dead by now if we wanted you dead. Okay. Uh, that could be persuasion, intimidation, or animal handling. But let's let's try persuasion. Okay. This is the lucky one. This is the lucky one. Roll a d4 with it. Yep. And, and you, you, have advantage. you do have advantage, yep. and you get an extra d4. <laughs> okay, what was that? That was 
a 16, I think, wasn't it? I think I think it was. I think it was. 17. 18. Okay. Should I get a 1 on the D4? Oh, no. Oh. No, I got a 2. Um, oh, a 2. We'll do animal handling because it's a plus three. 16, 17, 18, 21. 21. Yeah. Um, she looks to the group of you and that last line where like you, you mentioned that she'd be dead if, if the group of you meant her any harm. She sees Vert purposefully not really struggling against the, the grip that she has him in. She sees Torin backing off and putting away the sword. Um, and she slowly loosens her grip on Vert and lets him drop to the ground uh, and she backs away as far as she can get and says very well very well just leave leave my anthill leave my subjects alone just leave um and as she says that uh you can hear out in the hall uh night mantis calls you get you must have done something they're backing off it's working, whatever it was. Keep doing that. <laughs> Seems to have worked. Okay, you can so uh, drop out of initiative, I think. I'll message Owen and say success. Great. Tell her thank you. What did, What does she want? What did she say? She just says get out. Great. Let's get out. Let's go. Yes, I'm, I'm ready. I'm going to make a show of kind of bowing to the queen as I back away. It seems uh, like her eyes are kind of watching each of you warily. Torrin, can you, uh, can you get the thing? I, oh, not yeah. The, uh, the, leave it to me. And he, he goes over and he pretty much picks up this kobold in one the hand kobold. and throws it over his shoulder. <laughs> and what will you want to do about that point at the hood? The what's left of this? I guess it was dis decimated. Yeah. We could leave it, I guess. <sighs> I don't want it. We don't think it's going to come back to life and Things Try don't to... usually... Is that... No, things don't do that. This is not something I... This is not a natural thing. You never know what... Yes. It, it, it is kind of creepy. Do I have can it? I, can I do like an arcana check on the... What the remains of the hood thing? Yeah, sure. I was going to say, is it like a nature or a medicine check to make sure it's actually dead? Yeah, to make sure it's dead, it would be like a... Medicine makes sense to me. I'll do that. Yep. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> but so a... That's a six. <laughs> yeah, this thing's kind of strange. Like, it didn't really have blood. I don't know. It and so it life. just kind of got chopped into pieces. Yeah. But, like, none of the pieces are moving. I know there are some, some creatures in the world that can divide their bodies and, and repopulate well, that way. Most things die when they're killed. Well, I don't know. Is it dead? This is the wisest word I've ever heard. I mean, you know, people can live without arms, right? Sometimes. Okay. Embers walks over to it and just stops. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, oh, sure. it like squishes under your, mm -hmm. your shoe. And and looks back at Elvin and like shrugs. Yeah. <laughs> Thumbs up. <laughs> so Bert, like, grabs Ember's foot and, like, grabs some of the sample from it to look at it. Yeah. <laughs> I rolled a 14. I wanted to know if it was, like, manufactured is not really the right word. Like, if it was, pre like, like man-made or if it was, like, mm. another it's... Spellscar Desert thing. Yeah, it's, it, like... Unlike, unlike creatures of the Spellscar Desert, which tended to be, like natural but kind of warped by magic yeah. this thing seems unnatural okay. like whatever this thing whether it was created or is just from somewhere completely alien like it does not fit in with the natural order of things that, it definitely seems magical in, in some regard yeah all right well then let's leave it and get out of here okay uh, how are we doing that? We're a long way down. Oh, well, if we could... Um... If we read... Well, could, do you have a friend uh, still that can carry us up? Or... Uh... The spirit ant, I think she's talking about. 
Your your friendly aunt? Uh, I don't have any more spell slots for that. Oh yeah, I, I, I'm out of chat. I'm out of energy too. I can't transform again. Night Mantis uh flips a knob on her, her gun and that like grapple gun attachment pops out. We can try and use this. It'll only get us up a little bit at a time, but there were branches from the tunnels. That's true. It'll be slow. Um, It'll take uh, you know, all of your physical energy to climb, but uh, I prepared spider climb for that. What did I well, Night Mantis will go warily edging past the soldier ants who kind of part to let her yeah. go by. I'll go with her, because I've got a climb speed. Yeah. Uh, okay. That or we could just... I mean, I don't think she's got any... We could always go and look for the source of the wind as well. I can also make a five foot, five feet of an ice ladder at a time, but I don't know. <laughs> <but> it... <laughs> um, does that, does the embers like start climbing? Yeah. Okay. Oh, then a Night Mantis will just basically be like, oh, uh, then probably rather than this, maybe I should just tie a rope to you and you can oh, sure, take sure. it up. Yeah. She just ties a rope mm -hmm. real how, quick. How, many, how long of a rope do you have? And how, how long is it up to the first um, branch? Yeah, her rope was only like 50 feet. Because it's I not going to be long I enough. Have, That's a good point. Do I have a rope? I have no rope. I have a rope. I have 50 feet of rope. So we, we could tie them together. How far up was the first branch? That's pretty far. They're like 500 feet. Pretty years. far. 500 feet? Um, yeah, they are about 500 foot increments. Nobody has a climbing kit? And Everett's just like holds out a hand. I can create tools. Kind of. It would take the, the rest, doesn't it? Um, I'll have to look at the item real quick. I mean, we could just hole up in if an you... alcove and take a short rest, and then I can carry us all up there. That's also an option. If he creates uh, tools, though, Torin could probably, because Torin's pretty strong, mm -hmm. climb up with them and might be able to carry you one at a time. I mean, she told us to get out, but yeah. we're not in her throne room, but is there, like, a little room? Let's see. We could just... There was that room that we could what was the one with all the bodies mm. blocking it? Oh yeah, down. that is um, Next to the... this area down here. Yeah. So this says it's an action that can transform it to any type of artisan's tools. I don't know if climbing climber's kit, kit would not count as artisan's tools. tools. Yeah. Yeah, I think our, an... our best bet might be as an artificer. I can take a rest and make tools. Yeah. So we'd have to take a rest anyway. Yeah. So my best. Our best bet might be me transforming, and then I can take multiple trips to carry buddy up. Yeah, that sounds that sounds all right. I still think at some point we want to come back down and look for this wind to nexus. Unless, unless, unless charm, you could you could talk to some of these soldier ants here and, and ask if they would be kind enough to carry us up. It's worth a shot. I can I can give you a little help. Um, like I, I mean, they don't call me charm for nothing. Yeah. We could try that now. I mean, what's the sure. hurt, right? Sure. Um, I'll cast guidance on you again. <laughs> Good luck. Just you know, ask nicely. Okay. Um. So I'm going to change my carapace to match their coloring. Oh, nice. And uh, we'll say your queen has ordered us back to the surface, but we are having difficulty achieving her goal. Mm. Yes, we... you are strange creatures and cannot cling to walls. Mm. Correct. We require assistance. Would you be willing to assist us? Um, they kind of look at each other, and one of them scuttles off into the queen's chamber, uh, and then comes back a few moments later and says, Our queen has given us authority to carry you to the surface. We will do as you ask. She does not want to see you again. I, it's understandable. She blames us. I do not know why. We were not that hooded brain. We took the hooded brain off, but we are grateful. Thank you. Uh, and yeah, they will basically cool. let you climb onto their backs and will carry you now all the all way up to the top. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, Great. That worked out. Yep. That You played exactly to what their queen wanted you to do. Yeah. So... <laughs>
I don't yeah, see why Puppets not. still here. We could be ant in the wall. <laughs> <laughs> you just have to give charm wing. Uh, and you make your way out of the anthill, back into the sunlight. It is still blustery wind uh, all throughout the town. But um, it looks like most of the ants have gone below ground for the moment. I assume you want to go back to your keep and rest? Yeah. And we have, you said we had places to lock up. You do have a jail cell. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So, Tor and I, I reckon we ought to stick this guy in a jail cell with some water and maybe a little bit of food and wait for him to wake up and the rest of us can just kind of recover. Mm hmm. Sounds good to me. I'll place him in a cell, and uh, I guess I'll keep watch. That would be great. If uh, you're feeling up to it, I know you got... I am I am more than capable, Torrent. To keep watch? Yes. I'll be happy to. Smart. He cast like, no to a little psychic rest. Psychic magic, right? Huh? He had, like, psychic spells. Yeah, he did have some psychic abilities. So, did he need to chant a spell to do that? Or was it just, like... Uh, interestingly, he did not. So, did he have to, like, did he have to, like, see the target? Like, if he blindfolded him and... I mean, it probably wouldn't hurt. Yeah, because I'm just thinking some type of precaution that he can't hurt you. We could take all of his his things. What kind of things does he have on? Um, he doesn't have much in the way of possessions. Like, no no money or anything like that. But any... Um, Spell focuses or... Yeah, as you search through his things, he actually doesn't have any... Any spell focus, which is interesting, because he definitely was using spell-like abilities. Um, what you do find, though, is that, like, plasticky gun weapon he uh, attempted to pull out at one point, uh, and some cartridges that load into that. So you can take that off of him. Yeah, why not? Um, Another toy for you to play with, Bert. Great. <laughs> Doesn't sound great. Um... Yeah. Uh, the other thing you would notice is he has a what looks like a, a tattoo on maybe like the, the side of the neck of the symbol of the League of Terror. Mm -hmm. That sort of draconic head with the third eye in the middle, uh, runes to the side and the tentacles coming off the jaw. Um, yep. That's what you would find. Mm. So I will uh, drag you over to the dungeon level map and put him in the in the cell if you want. Okay. Um, let's see if you copy that. Which cell do you want him in? It looks like you've got two. The uh, worst one. one. The worst one. The worst one. Yeah. <laughs> I think they're equally terrible, though actually one has a cot and the other looks like doesn't, so. They both play like the cots. Or do they? They're just, you know, right? Yeah. I think uh, we'll keep them in the wind you put them in. Yeah, yeah. it doesn't really matter. Whatever Torin does. Oh, it does have a cot. Um, but yeah, there's like, there's like manacles attached to the floor that you can clip onto his leg. Uh, and then any other precautions you want to take against him? You were talking about blindfolding, right? Yeah, just making so he can't. Yeah, and disarming him as much as possible. Okay. Uh, then yeah, he is blindfolded, and the group of you can take a little bit of a short rest. He'll probably be unconscious for a little while longer. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, even a short rest would be great. Yeah. Go ahead and uh, take a short rest, and then anything you want to do during the short rest. I'm going to use my natural recovery to get back some spell slots. I guess I'll put on with the plastic gun. Um, why don't you roll... Uh, it'd be intelligence with tools that I'm sure you have, like, like Hebrews tools or something mm -hmm. like that. Sure, I can make a tool. Um, so intelligence plus, plus your proficiency. Oh, that's an 18. Plus, plus seven, I think. Uh, what's my 
proficiency score. Is there a plus three right now? I think it's plus three. Part of the side. I think it is plus three. Okay, yeah. five. So that's plus seven. That's twenty-five. Oh, yes. Okay. Um, yeah. The interesting thing about this gun is it doesn't look like it's designed to fire bullets or anything like that. You take apart one of these cartridges, mm. and what you find inside is little um, plastic pellets, each of which contains a large, vicious-looking ant. Um, and it looks like this gun is designed to fire bullet ants. Like, it fires a pellet with an ant in it that then breaks upon yeah. contact, and then the ant will bite. <laughs> like, it latches on and just bites. That is hilarious. That's yeah. nasty. Yep. Strange. Um, so, yeah, you dodged a bullet. Not getting hit by these. <laughs> I'm shaking my head at him. How we all are. Bullet ants. Okay, so we got... You got a bullet ant shooter? Bullet ant. Okay, great. <laughs> is there, a, is there an actual... There's not an item for it yet, but I can I can make one sure. for you. Or ant munition. <laughs> mm-hmm. And are these ants alive? Mm-hmm. Like, how long are they going to be alive for if they're just in this... It looks like while they're in these capsules, there's more to these capsules than just like... It's like a Pokeball. Yeah. They look like they're in kind of like a suspended animation maybe in there. So right, like who knows how long they'll live, but yeah. Okay, great. Animation. I, I didn't say it. Suspended animation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's what Vert does for the short rest. Anyone else have anything they want to do? Mm. I think Ellen's just going to go up and take a very long bath. Try to wash all of the blood and gunk off of her. Sounds good. <laughs> She's just, yeah, she went down a lot. It's not, not fun. Um, Night Mantis and Torin both look like they got beat up pretty bad. Like, Night Mantis has bite marks all over her and, like, holes in her outfit from where stingers mm -hmm. were going in. <clears throat> so, uh, those two definitely go off on their own to rest a little bit, since Charm said she could guard Snork. Uh, and a little bit of short rest time passes, and eventually, Charm, you see that Snork does begin to stir a little bit. Still unconscious, but will probably regain consciousness very soon. Okay. So, I've been patrolling back and forth in front of the cell. Very nervous that he has some kind of power that that I'm unaware of so when I notice that he's waking I'll probably send a message to embers mm -hmm. to, to let them know okay yeah embers you get the mental telepathic ping that okay. snork is waking up all right um I'll, I'll hurry and jog down the stairs from where I was resting Okay. You don't get any of the rest of it. Um, I think you're in the bath, right? I mean, yeah. yeah. But knock on the door. You're like, hey, he's up. Um, I think I'm going to get you in a minute. I just want to go and see if everything's okay with John. That's fine. Like, I don't think this is going to be the, the interrogation. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah? What's up? Yes. How would you like to proceed? Oh, I'm very bad at this. We, we need... Um, we need the others. Yes, um. Do you want to stay here and watch while I get them, or do you want me to stay? Mm, I'm happy to stay. Okay, great, because I don't want to be here. And um, <laughs> Embers, who got hit, like, really hard by that mind blast, is like, I don't, yep. don't want to be the only one here in this room Fair. with this guy. Uh, races upstairs to get the others. Uh, after Embers leaves... Um, oh, no. Snork finally stirs to consciousness when it's just charm down there for the moment. Um, and you can see he kind of sits up on the cot, noted, looks to, or kind of feels down at the manacle. Um, 
did you did, would you i guess you would have bound the hands as well huh mm-hmm. um kind of notices the manacle with the um attached to the leg and kind of pulls at the hand bones a little bit um and says where where am i what have you done with me who's there i can feel your presence you are secure and safe for the time being i would advise you to stay silent as possible until the other members are here very well i will wait and speak with you as a group and he just kind of lapses into silence but stands up um as best as he can and kind of moves a little bit closer to the cell door to like the limits of the manacle chain on the floor charm telepathically shoves him back oh okay does he need to make a save Strict save. Not one of the strong suits. DC 14. Uh, fails and is thrown back onto the cot. Um, and you can see his tentacles kind of, as he's sitting back up on the cot, his tentacles kind of move with anticipation a little bit. And he just kind of says, Ah, I know that touch, that psionic touch. You too have powers of the mind. Um, and then he goes back to being quiet, and the group of you can come down here and find this, this scene as well. (laughs) Ember just runs away. I'm, like, posted up at the far side of this, just, like, watching to make sure everything goes okay. I'm not, like, part of this. There's nothing I can contribute here. Sure. Yeah, so I guess once Virk's there and everyone else is there, um, he'll just ask Stark, what were you trying to do down there? Um, A telepathic voice comes into your head charm, uh, and he says, Am I to take it now that I may speak? Is this your entire group assembled? Do as you're told. Uh, And then out loud he says, I was caring for my colony, my friends, my children. Your colony? Yes, yes. I uh, had taken charge of them. Against their will? Uh... Kind of shrugs a little bit at that. To what end? My master, my creator, needed them for a purpose. And when that purpose was fulfilled, I was to shepherd them away. And I did. What was the purpose? They had to dig and dig and dig. And when they had finished their digging, they were no longer needed. They... Does this have to do with the winds from down beneath? Uh, he stays silent. Um... So I guess I'll just say... Um... Hmm. What am I uh, trying to think of the right words for this? If um, if you don't immediately reply and you're kind of silent for a moment contemplating, he says, I hope you didn't harm the queen and her colony too much. How would you care? Sounds like they you, you had no need for them. Well, I told you they are my, my friends, my family. Ah. I may have had no need of them, and certainly my master no longer needed them anymore, but I enjoyed their company. Back to the point, though. What what were they digging for? 
an ancient device. A well. Like the one back at um Rhyme Strand. Ah, oh, you visited the cold nexus then, I see. Didn't he make a comment about that? Like, I thought I got rid of you or something? Or... Oh, um, that was not in reference to... No, okay. that was that was something else. Uh, he was, at that point, the implication was he thought he had gotten rid of all of the, you know, humans and humanoids who were living in Amberhart. Oh, okay, yeah. I see. We had, we had seen a dead one of its kind. Right. Right. Yeah. So yeah, we we are familiar with these nexuses or whatever. Um. It's interesting because even though he's blindfolded, he's like able to turn his head towards whoever is speaking. Very like it, there's some like extra sensory. Um, sense you know there's something going on there that he's able to like locate who's talking to him very mm -hmm. easily um so his his head you know fixes in your direction and he says yes indeed what my master was digging for down below is similar and related to the thing that you would have seen back in rhyme strand and uh, if you visited there then i believe i know who i speak to now silver seekers Yes, my master is aware of you. And the feeling is mutual. I'm not about to leave, Terrace. Um, <clears throat> he just kind of nods at that and says, Well, you should know that I am no longer among their members. When I brought these ants upward, I broke free of my master's psychic hold. Otherwise, I would have had to return to him. I'm going to check that. Me too. I have no idea. Natural 20. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, 30. Um, 30 insight. <laughs> yeah. Um, Bert. I got like a 7. Yeah, you're not, you're not quite sure, but um, Elwyn... You think he's probably being truthful to an extent? Um, like, he probably did break free of his master's psychic hold when he came up this direction. But whether his loyalty has fully shifted away from the League of Terrors, probably not. I mean, he still has the tattoo. And even as you're kind of carefully watching him for reactions, you see the tattoo on him shift a little bit. Kind of in the same way Kishira is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking that too. I, th I think Embers forgets she's not supposed to be talking here and says, how? How did you do that? Distance. Distance. My master is not omnipotent. His power has a range, an extent, and I moved beyond it. And yet you still refer to him as your master. And kind of goes a little bit silent to that. If you... are you, But you said you're still not... You're not loyal to your master anymore, right? He didn't say that. He just said he broke free. Yeah. I uh, wished to spend more time caring for the colony. If you wish to care for the colony, why do you need to control the mind of the queen? If they're your family. I... Despite... My own psionic powers, I have no way to communicate with beasts on my own. I needed my master's creation in order to speak with her. Would you be willing to make a deal? I don't know what exactly I could offer you, but perhaps... Information about your master? I'm afraid I don't know much. Um, what if it is hinged on the safety of your friends and family down below? Um, roll an intimidation check. Yeah, okay. You have guidance. Yeah. I'm Cast proficient it. in intimidation. Cast it before the conversation started. <laughs> okay, that is a... 
54. I know. Well, it's right at the top of the guidance. Button. Is so good. Uh, I got to twenty-eight. Twenty-eight. Okay. Um. Yeah. His head. His head turns uh, in your direction, and he says, <clears throat> "Very well. I will tell you what I know, limited though it may be. If you do not harm my colony, we'll see what your information provides." If you're honest. What do you want to know? Kind of like, Vert will look to the group and see if there's any burning questions that people want to know about the League of Terrors. So, yeah, Vert will say, well, you can start by telling us about your master, if how much you know about them. His name is Cephalosk. Cephalosk? Cephalosk. Yeah. C e p h a l o s s k. Sorry, can you spell that one more time? <laughs> let me let me actually pull it up in my notes. C e p h a. C e p h a. L o s s k. If only I could use yeah. one okay. tentacle angel. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. I, uh, I didn't know I knew that until now. Um, uh, it's its own kind of form. Okay, yep. let's keep going. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> His name is Cephalosk, and he is powerful of mind. Mm hmm. He strives to break seals left by the divine. To what end? That I do not know. And the the League are... of Terrors has not confided in one such as myself. Their grander goals, all sure. I know is they seek to unbind these nexuses. Okay, the nexuses are the... Okay. And what made you pledge loyalty to this entity, this person. Uh, he seems confused by that. Like, why do you, why did you follow them? Why does a worker ant follow her queen? So you were... Or his queen. Hmm. It is innate. I see. And did he... Did Cephalos, like create you or like yeah he kind of nods ah, okay i understand okay i do not know the process but That's i fine. was snork and now i am a different snork <laughs> aren't we all <laughs> um okay let's see so when you said you were able to sort of break out of the range of of their influence like how what does that mean exactly my master is currently deep beneath the earth so, okay. in a place called the underdark Great. and i was yeah. to okay. bring these ants upward and away as they were no longer needed and i found his grip on my mind weakened the further mm -hmm. I got, and eventually it was gone. gone. If he came back, would that grip return? I suspect it would. Okay. But he did not explicitly order me to return. I think it was implied, and so I stayed. Let's see. Do you know where the other nexuses are? He shakes his head. You were only tasked with this one? I believe there is one north and west of here. We had visited it briefly. But, um, I do not know the locations of the rest, no. 
the one northwest of here is that separate from the one that you were digging toward with your hands. Yeah, he nods. Is your work with this one complete? The one... My master still searches for answers of some kind. I think that he is not satisfied with the degree we have been able to unbind them up to this point. You see? Where exactly is this nexus that you were digging to? How far down? Mm, deep miles beneath. Through caverns and over dark lakes. Just follow the wind. Do the ants know the way there? Um, he considers and says, mm, perhaps, though it has been some time since we climbed from the depths, their scent trails may not linger. I have an unrelated question. Um, the last time we were interrogating someone from the League, that tattoo activated and did something. Why hasn't it done that for you? Uh, <clears throat> he can't quite, like, with the way that he's his hands are tight, can't quite, like, reach up to touch it. Mm -hmm. um, but he kind of, like, you can see that he, like, twitches his neck mm -hmm. as you remind him of it. Um, <clears throat> and he says, I suspect that the one on the other end has not yet noticed I am captive. His eyes are rarely upon me. I am not so important. Hmm. Who is on the other end? Is it the master or is it someone else? My master called him... The Decayed Death. Wow, oh, we heard that name. That's, um, the dragons. I think that was what it was called. Hold on, let me that was in the book, too. Where's my, where's my... Okay. my yes, notes? The Decayed Death. My notes on the History's Mysteries. There we go. <laughs> they go. The Decayed Death or the Decayed Death? Uh, he says Decayed here. But decaying was what we read. Yes. Okay. Oh. Hmm. <laughs> Just a different intenses. <laughs> yeah. He's like continuing to fidget with the tattoo mm -hmm. now that it's been brought up. I think Bert kind of looks to the others and he has kind of a satisfied, like... What is it going to take to convince you to take the ants and leave this place? Find another place to set up a colony? Leave this town alone? Mm. I would do this. He doesn't specify any conditions, just as I would do this. Charm accident talks to Owen. You would not want his help leading you to this, said Nexus. He knows where it is. Could we trust him? Do we need his help? I don't think we'd want him to because if he goes If he gets too close enough deep, to the to his master, no matter what his allegiances are, he'll be. As the group of you begin to have this sort of psychic it's conversation. Hard. I need to check something. Oh, never mind. Needs to be able to see. Okay, never mind. You have this conversation. <laughs> Wife holding him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, then perhaps you. Uh, maybe he can refresh the memory of one of his aunts and you can take one of them with you to lead the way. 
this may be dead. Maybe we just talk to the queen again. Well, she doesn't want to see it. I mean, so Is what? it going to be difficult to find it? I mean, you just follow the wind, right? Yeah, but I don't know. Well, maybe. He said the Underdark. We went deep into that queen's chamber, but that wasn't miles. I don't know if the ants have seen this nexus yet. It was a few thousand feet, right? Like... Um, yeah, it was like 2,000 feet down. Which is like 500 miles. The ants dug up, didn't they? Oh, no, true. they dug down to the nexus. Wow. So you could follow the ant trails and get there. And I have magic that can help once we get within 1,000 feet of it. That's true. I can locate that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I guess if we just tell them to leave the ant trails intact, or, or block them from... I don't know. This is, this is really not my expertise at all. No, you had decent survival. Not underground. Fair. I'm not worried about finding it, and I don't know if we can trust him. Yeah, I'm not sure either. <clears throat> but... I think between the four of us and, and Torin and possibly Nat Matt Mantis, I think she might have some good tracking abilities and charm. You seem quite capable. But. If this is something you'd be willing to help us with. I am very good at patrolling and happy to help. So we ask him to block up the holes and then for most of them they leave? I think we just ask him to leave. And then we'll yeah, just, just take our take the holes down. Okay. Maybe return the uh cattle and the other oh, yeah. stock. boxes that are from the town that are still in good condition. Yeah. The group of you kind of look back to Snork after you've had this conversation, and the eyes, the three eyes on the tattoo, have begun to oh, glow no. Looks a like we got greenish color. <clears throat> um, and Snork's head is kind of twitching back and forth a little bit. Are we in the company of the decayed death? He, he is here, and he speaks to me. What is he telling you, Snook? He wishes to know what I have told you. His head is switching back and forth. Maybe we should just... Uh, and as this happens, a louder, deeper Can I... voice booms into the room. Mm -hmm. So... You have kidnapped yet another one of us, I see. Add him to the list. <laughs> Whatever this one told you, it will be of minor consequence. He does not know much. But he is a traitor to our cause, nonetheless. Then I suppose you won't miss him. And I'm going to try to cast a spell magic on the tattoo. Oh, snap. Okay. Cast it. Mm-hmm. We're going to see if this works. Mm-hmm. Can I save a life today? <laughs> All right. How does this work again? I just have to roll a d20. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you will need to... What level do you cast? I guess you only have up I to only third, have up to so... three, so it's third. Um... Uh... Make an ability check using your spellcasting ability, okay. Which is plus four. Are you crossing your eyes to <laughs> both hands? Oh boy. Hands and All eyes. Right. I'm gonna do one of the big ones. Okay, so seventeen. Um you cast your magic forward and try to banish this tattoo from his neck, but you feel a surge of dark power coming from it that pushes back against you. You also feel a well of power behind you, something that is not physically there, but you recognize it to be energy that is available to you to supplement your effort, originating from the weaver. Oh shit. Much do you care about Snork? Yeah, how, how important you, is it that you, we... As you kind of turn from Snork to look back towards this, 
you can see there is a spider web up on the wall of this with a spider just situated in the middle looking down at you. How similar is it to my own power? How different is it? Not as different as you'd think. But it is greater, and it is it would be enough to push this over the edge. Oh god. <laughs> Crippling indecision. <laughs> <laughs> that was sarcasm. I don't know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um <laughs> oh god time slows down oh, no. <laughs> crippling moment of just oh shit um I'm not gonna do it okay. I'm not gonna do it I'm, gonna, I'm um, very tempted but I'm not gonna do it you push forward as much of your power as you can but it buckles before the energy that is erupting from this tattoo and its eyes on Snork's neck begin to glow green, and the thing begins to grow across his neck. Um, its black edges just stretching over his his body. Um, and who speaks Draconic? Just Vert, I think. Um, Vert. A single... The rest of you just hear a single Draconic word okay. echo throughout the chamber. Vert, you're the only one who knows what it says. Oh, I do too, sorry. Oh, you do as well? I do. The two of you recognize a single draconic word. It just says, ROT! And as you watch, Snork begins to wither and decay and congeal into a rotten body of a kobold, and he just kind of (laughs) melts before you. And the tattoo vanishes in a puff of smoke. Snork lets out a bit of a scream and is dead. Mm. Oh my god. Can't capture the fire on him because he's a puddle of tears. So just use my third level Yes. Uh, I think Helen's just going to look very visibly shaken, and without saying anything, she's just going to turn and go back upstairs. Just walk away. Uh, okay. Uh, John, where do you uh, keep the mops? <laughs> <laughs> There's a storage room down here yeah. in the basement. Yeah, go follow me. All right. That was gross. Yeah. And also very scary, and I'm really, really confused. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you about it. Thank you. <clears throat> so, Nightmare just wasn't with us, right? Nope. And then, okay. Neither was Torin. The two of them were resting elsewhere. Yeah. So I guess Vert will linger for a moment, and then follow Elwyn upstairs. Okay. Uh, Charm and Embers kind of clean up the puddle that was Snork. Mm -hmm. Uh, And the two of you head upstairs. Um, You do encounter Night Mantis when you go up there. And uh, Torin, they seem to have come back into the dining room area. (coughs) And we're having a little bit of a snack there. Is Ellen just like for a private time or what is she doing? Uh, she probably went straight up to the roof and found a corner and is hyperventilating a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I think Vert will, like, do, like, a hand symbol, like, I'll be right back, and then he'll, like, just follow up and then try and comfort her okay. and check in on her and see what's up. As you approach, she's just gripping that, like, she's, like, leaning against the edge of the roof railing or whatever. Um, she's gripping it really tight, and she's just like, I, I could have saved him. I, I wanted to save him. I, I, I knew that was going to kill him, but I didn't. 
I did that. That was my fault. It wasn't your fault. I could have saved him. You weren't the one that casted that spell on him. But I could have stopped it. I had the power to do it. I just... I didn't know what it would mean to say yes. Did she already tell me about the Weaver stuff, all this stuff? No? We haven't had a chance to talk since the last fight. Yeah. So, I mean, you knew about the first meeting with the Weaver, but yeah, that's yeah. it. The Weaver just kind of, like, hugs her back and just, like, willing to listen, but doesn't want to cry. I don't think she tells you. Mm -hmm. That's fine. If you don't pry, she's not going to say anything. She's just... She's got a lot going on, so... Crying. Okay. Okay, so yeah, he'll just stay with her. And... The group of you, or the two of you, just spend some time uh, yeah. up on the, the roof of the keep. Yeah. Uh, hair being kind of blown in the wind together. Embers is going to tell Charm kind of the, the broad stroke stuff about, you know, the Leotaires and the people we've met. Um, and finish and saying, you know, like, Charm, I really wanted it. What Ellen did to work, I'm really, I'm really afraid that it didn't work. The terrors, aptly named. Also, they seem very, very, very powerful. Yeah. Uh, if that, if Ellen's magic can't help that tattoo. I don't know what, what's what's gonna happen to Kishira. It sounds like it's going to take all, every one of our combined efforts to thwart this mob. Bullies are always, uh... There's always some way to take them down. We just have to discover their weakness. Yeah. Yeah, I... You're a good person for worrying about this, Kashura. I... You may be sure to my help in any capacity. Yeah, um... <coughs> we might be going somewhere soon to the Underdark. And we were thinking of doing that anyway because... Ellen needs to go there. But you're welcome. We'd really like to have you along if you were willing to make the trip from Amberhearth. I have dark vision. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, we'll be fine in, in the under dark. Uh, she takes the time to consider. Um, I have been very impressed with you all since I've had the pleasure to meet you. And I think it would be my greatest honor if I could be of any help at all to contribute anything. Uh, we. Or uh, small. You know, I was going to say we, we'd love to have you, but honestly, I think we need you. You contributed so much to our attempts to save this town. I mean, we, we could never have done any of that without you. That's, that's very comforting. Very comforting. Happy to be a part. Okay. How? Yep. How tall is Charm? Pretty tall. I think I'm like six feet. Feeding for tallest member. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think she's Ember's tall, is she? Uh, I'm trying size, to find out. Size medium, but I think their beams are pretty tall. Lifespan, height, and weight. Like yeah, nine feet tall, like box height. You know, it doesn't actually say really. Hmm. Well then I think yeah, I'll be, the height. I, well then I think, I think I want to be like 6'5". Okay. <laughs> That's pretty tall. That's pretty That's tall. really tall, yeah. Is that taller than Embers? No, I don't. Uh, um, I have, I have she's six, so tall. She's like, she's gotta be like 6'7 or something, I think right? So. Ridiculously Rich. tall cat. That six, was, oh, a 6'5 is what I listed. <laughs> yeah. So we see eye to eye then. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, 
this is so dumb. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, and I, I think having having gotten that agreement and saying like, you know, um, I haven't gotten a chance to sleep in any of the beds here so far. <laughs> You know, I don't think I even have a bed in here so far. Well, you know, I think there's an open one. <laughs> Show me. Okay. Yeah, there was an open one on the second floor. All right. Making a uh, a charisma <laughs> check, I guess. Was it open or did Torin take it? No, Torin's still sleeping down on the first floor right. in one of the storage rooms. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't think I don't think this is really the kind of thing a, a Christmas check is called for, but basically Ember's is making a very clumsy pass at, at Charm. <laughs> Charm Charm doesn't sleep, so I mean. I mean, you don't need to sleep. No. Um, Charm will say to you, "It sounds like you need a little company right now." Yeah. <laughs> Would it be me? <laughs> Would you be up for it? Let's go. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, for being a cat person, Embers is the most horn dog character. Yeah. Ever. <laughs> <laughs> we can leave it at that <laughs> in a moment. And uh it hurt me close. Did they or didn't they? Yeah, you two can decide that. <laughs> Round <later>. two. <laughs> Campaign two. Did yeah. they or didn't they? <laughs> It sorry, doesn't really matter. Phone, sorry. I just crashed that into the mic. That was what really loud. <laughs> That's okay. Um, evening comes around. <laughs> the group of you probably come back together eventually when you start smelling uh, the food that Dot begins to prepare for dinner. Um, interestingly enough, you've never actually seen Dot eat the food that he prepares. Um, it seems like he must eat elsewhere or something else or... Because he makes food for you, but he, he doesn't seem to really partake in it. Um, and the group of you are kind of seated around the table. Um, I assume it's kind of a, a down mood for the most part. Maybe not for everyone. I don't know. Who knows? But um, Ellen probably doesn't come down to dinner. Oh, she doesn't? No. Does Vert? I think Vert would offer to bring Ellen a meal. She, at that point, she'd probably just ask to be left alone for a little while. Okay. Does um, she want soul with her? No. Okay. So yeah, then help her. We'll just uh, what's the wrong one for? Um, with great difficulty, leave her and join <laughs> the rest of the group. I mean, she would have been like, "No, no, you go eat. It's fine. Don't worry about me. She doesn't want I'll to. be down in a little while." All right. Um. Then uh, at some point during the dinner, <laughs> she says she's going to, but she definitely doesn't. He's like, check. doesn't even need to be rolled. <laughs> at some point during the dinner, um, Night Mantis kind of makes eye contact with with Rhyme mm. across the table, um, and says, "So, uh, well, we saved the town, I guess." I mean. Have you been out there again? Did they are the ants leaving? I looked down from the top of the keep for a little bit. Um, doesn't seem like they've left yet. If they're going to leave, but I guess we were gonna have that was gonna be something. Nork was gonna do for us. We'll just go talk to the queen again. Yeah, whether she wants to. They might something. listen to Elwyn. I think. Yeah. Where is Elwyn? He's on the roof. Oh. She's not happy about the outcome that happened in the dungeon. Yeah. Yeah, well. Um, Night Mantis will ask about the things you learned. You don't have to regurgitate them to me, but... Um, yeah, do you tell her about everything yeah. you learned? Yeah, I think... Um, yeah, obviously, uh, I, don't, I don't leave any details out. And then, um, yeah. She listens to the entire story up to... Snork becoming a puddle. Uh, and then says, Well, it sounds like the next thing we need to do uh, is head down deep into the Underdark then. But 
before that. I, I believe I made a promise. Yeah. We can uh, take care of that now if you'd like. After dinner. Yeah, she kind of looks around the room. I stop on charm for a little bit. Um, and then she looks back to you and says, I promised to tell you and your entire group, so... Uh, if, if these are the people you want to know my story, then I will share it here. Sure. Um... Charm messages. Shall I leave? I mean, you can stay. You, you think you're, you're okay? Um... Yeah, sure. Okay. She kind of leans forward across the table and reaches, or not across the table, but like putting her elbows on the table and like, um, you know, holding, holding her, resting her head on, you know, her folded fingers. And then she reaches up and she pulls the mask up onto the top of her head um, so that all of you can see that she has kind of like piercing green eyes underneath there. Um, And she looks over towards Rhyme, takes a deep breath, and then begins to talk. <coughs> my name, my, my real name, is Estelle. And I believe, she kind of like looks deep into Rhyme's eyes, that we are related. My mother, um, uh, her name was Bailey. And she was a spy for a noble house in Vidun, the Hawkmond family. I was raised there for many years. I, I honestly didn't see my mother much in my youth. I was cared for by nurses for the most part. At one point, during one of my mom's long missions, I got a message from her that I was to come to Vagma, where she had apparently been married to a previous mark of hers. Um, they had crafted a persona for me, um, pretending that I was the daughter of Basil's previous wife, uh, pretended that I had been sickly or something like that some, some ruse to keep me out of to explain why i had been out of the public eye for my entire life and they had prepared a place for me but i didn't get along with either of them and so i i left before too long um, i went back to bidoon and i tried to find my aunt my mother's sister isabella it took me a long time to find her, but when I did, she had wormed her way into a position of power. She was, she was imitating someone. Um, I need to actually get the name here. Uh, a woman named Mira Durthane. Uh, and all of you can roll a history check if you want, those of you who are here. Yeah. What was the name? Mira Durthane. 21. 22. I got a 24. Okay, well that makes sense for Charm. <laughs> <laughs> um, it also makes sense for both of you uh, to have passed that because Mira Durthane is the current legate of Vidun. Um, before, um, can't I find it? Um, before the fall of Vagma, uh, she was the wife to the former chancellor of that state, 
uh, and she somehow managed to maintain her position of power after the transfer <coughs> into joining the Empire. Um, so she is the current Legate. Um, she is also Reiko Spear, is paired with a, um, a black dragon named Paldair. Um, seeing the recognition in your eyes, Night Mantis goes on. So is she supposing that her aunt, like, her aunt is actually the Legate? By the time that she had returned to Vidun and found her aunt, her aunt had taken over this person's persona, basically. So that per that person is not there, but her aunt yeah. is the... At least in that point in time. Invitation. Mm -hmm. Okay, I understand. Just want to make sure. Thank you. And the aunt's real name is Isabella? Isabella. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> I lived there with her for a little while, um, but one night <laughs> I had gone to bed, but I, I woke up in the night, I was feeling restless and I went for a walk through, through the castle and I, at my aunt's door, I overheard a conversation with strangers. I, I didn't recognize their voices, but, and they spoke in veiled terms. I didn't understand what they were speaking of but it was it was ominous and I could tell that it was bad and I believe now knowing what I know that she was speaking with members of this League of Terrors it starts to make a lot of things make sense I believe that the nexus to the northwest that was spoken of by Snork is in um, Vidun. I'm trying to remember the capital of Vidun. It is uh, Fulareth. We'll spell that. F U L A E R I T H. Not long after I left, and I, I left soon after that point. Um, it was around then that I learned that members of the royal family had survived the attack at Vagma. And I left to go seek them, see who I could find. Uh, not long after that, I began to hear rumblings of a perpetual storm over Falareth. Uh, lightning at all hours of the day, constantly. <laughs> I believe these things are related. Eventually, I caught onto your trail in Port, Port Horizon Shroud, and you know the rest. Hmm. So I'm having a bit of an informational disconnect as far as what I, the player, know and what Bert knows. Mm -hmm. Um. So, he didn't have any memories of Bistel at Bogma, right? No. Because uh, he was born after... Yes, hold on. Um, so, Bistel came to... Uh, Vagma around... The year 7517 and Vert wasn't born until two years later. So he was born a little bit after she left, in other words. Okay. She wasn't there for very long at all. So I think I think Vert will just look at her and say so you're my sister? half and then he'll just kind of like uh and as she says it um her skin ripples and changes in the way that yours does revealing that she is also a change yeah i think he'll just push his chair away and run over and give her a hug she looks like she looks stunned like yeah. <laughs> she goes rigid yeah um and he's gonna just start crying mm -hmm. And he'll also change it to his changeling form. 
Which is the first time you've seen it. Yeah. And yeah, the first yeah. time Charm has seen it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think I was trying to, like, talk around Vert to Charm, because I didn't know if that was cool or not <clears throat> when I was telling the story, so this was definitely would be a surprise for Charm. Um, yeah, when Tara's I met this look was... at you and, and telepathically say, is it okay if I cry? <laughs> I, I did. We're all crying. Um, yeah, Night Mantis. A couple of tears uh, stream from her eyes as well as she kind of gradually begins to hug you back. Um, and she says, I, I'm so sorry that I wasn't there when it happened. I, I, I think my aunt might have, I think our aunt might have been involved but I, f I feel like I should have been there, and I... He just says, I'm just so glad you're okay. If I'd been there, maybe I could have protected your father and our mother. Sounds like he's alive. Maybe oh, yeah. they're both alive. What? Oh, yeah, I've, I, I met him once. She looks... She kind of, like, pulls out of the hug and looks to you. <laughs> Where is he? What do, what, do, what do you mean? I'll, I'll give the story about Mount Verendar and the prison zone. We've got to find a way to rescue him. I know. He's not dead. Uh, I never got along with Basil, but I didn't want him to be dead. Even so, I'm I'm so sorry. I've I've regretted ever since I heard of what happened there. I've regretted that I left. I. You wouldn't have known that would happen. That we were betrayed. It does, I'm, I could have been there to help you, though, so you weren't on your own for all those years, at the very least. It's all right. Maybe, uh, maybe it was for the best that I was able to find friends and go through something like this. I don't know. He's gotten pretty tough, and I think that if he'd had someone nursemaiding him, might not have grown into that. Uh, yeah, she she nods and kind of pats Vert on the back a little bit. He is pretty tough, isn't he? Uh, <laughs> As he's like wiping tears from his yeah. face. Yeah, I'm tough. What is wrong? <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh... Well, you're not alone anymore. Does that mean you're coming with us? She nods. I... I won't be satisfied until... I've figured out the extent of... our aunt's involvement in all of this, and... So I will pursue these leads with you. Okay. As long as you'll have me. Of course. Our family is such a mess. <laughs> I, I learned this traveling around on my own for a bit. I think most families are a bit of a mess. <sighs> Ours might be more messy. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> uh, Dot comes barging in. Well, I've got desserts ready if anyone wants them. Oh, I'm ready. Comes over with like oh. a tray of cookies. Oh, Char gets like four. And <laughs> one in each hand. Chip. One in We're each like hand. We're like in our changed forms and stuff. And <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, Who are you guys? <laughs> what? Yeah, I'm not gonna ask. And he just kind of sets down the tray and like, I'll leave it to it. Backs off. <coughs> okay. Um, I think this might be when Embers excuses herself to go find Alan. Okay. Uh, I was going to fade away from this scene anyways, yeah. unless anyone else had anything. So we can follow Embers. Going up to the roof. Is it dark outside now? Yeah, probably yeah. by now. Oh, it's probably just like out there looking up at the sky, just quietly. Hey, brought you a cookie. Oh, um, thanks. That's, that's awful sweet of you. She takes it, just kind of holds it. 
Not going down downstairs, you missed out on. Huh? You okay? Uh, a lot going on in here, too. She taps her head. Mm. I'm sorry, I, I think I let you down quite a bit. Especially. Wow. I don't think that's the way I would put it. It's more like I had a lot of hope that that would work. And if it didn't, <laughs> we'll just have to find some other way. Well, that doesn't have to be the last time we try it. Sure. It might work. If I try again, if I focus more, if I practice, if I don't know. Sure. We'll get a lot of practice with all this stuff, unfortunately, I think. It felt like it could have worked. Had me. I was... I was close. I was just a little bit stronger. I don't understand what any of this is that we're getting into. Yeah, me neither, really. It just... There's a lot of it, huh? Every time we think we get some kind of handle, it just... There's more and more, and now it's all about these nexuses, and these... Masters, and... I don't know. I have a feeling we're on the cusp of something really big. I don't know if we're going to be able to stop it. Well... If not us, and who? <laughs> yeah. You're right. But, you know, it's not, doesn't have to be just you stopping it. I mean, now we've got Night Madness on board and Charm is on board. And, you know, like I said, you know, there's a lot of stuff downstairs. <laughs> um, you know, well, and Ember's kind of like motions out from the roof toward the toward the town there's gonna be more allies out there um yeah we'll we'll we're heading to uh to your, your people soon right we'll find some drow who can help us yeah i i hope so i i hope they're willing to help i, I don't really know anything about them and those nice folks back in the library they know about the problem they're they're working on it you know that's true it's not just us. It's not just you. And, so. uh, you know, my friend's back in Fort Horizon Shroud, too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I just hope it'll be enough. There's more of us in there, right there. Are you feeling okay? You were getting knocked around pretty badly today. Uh, yeah, you know, it's one of those things where you judge. <laughs> I just gotta get stronger, right? Yeah. <laughs> gotta keep reviewing my manual, keep doing my exercises, keep pushing myself a little bit more with my forms, see how much I can do with my key every day. Hell, if you ever need a big fluffy training partner again, you know who to <laughs> ask. Yeah. <laughs> uh, can you, can you, do you have magic that like heats things up? Uh, I can, um, I could heat, like, metal. Okay. Probably. Well, your food's cold. It's fine. It's fine. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, that's all right. Cold doesn't really... bother me. <laughs> oh, my God. He you never bothered right to write it <laughs> Well, if you want to come eat your cold food, everyone else is still downstairs. Make a persuasion check. Sure. You can have advantage. <laughs> Good. Persuasion <laughs> check from Empress. Yeah. Oh. Uh, it's a 10. All right. It's a better result. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All uh, right. It's starting to get yeah. dark anyway. Check out the downstairs. She's yeah. like start nibbling kind of on the cookie. <laughs> Yeah, you come downstairs she to realizes find how hungry she is. Like, oh god! Both both Vert and Night Mantis in in changeling form, kind of huddled together, hugging a little bit. 
one arm kind of a, one of Night Mantis's arms is kind of a round yeah. vert. Notably, Alwyn's not quite as surprised as you might think she'd be. Yeah. Yeah, this is not my story to tell exactly. It's all that. <laughs> I think I can put the pieces together. Uh, yeah. And you join the group. And a restful night, I think, is had. Mm -hmm. Unless anyone else has anything they want to talk about or do. Yep. Okay. Uh, then, on kind of a... Like a... a not quite a... For the next couple days, on sort of a broader scale, mm. what's the plan with the ants? Well, I kind of blew my cover as an ant. If I go down there as an ant, they know that I transformed back into me and, and attacked the queen. That's basically what happened. Does, do they know? Because she was under this is my control point. thing. She and was. I'm not sure that that's true. That she well, was ever under mind control. Her, you know... Exactly. She had the hood on, recall. but she may recall everything that happened, sure. Yeah, I... I don't I, know. I, I, if I if wonder... he was telling the truth and it was just for communication, I mean, it seems a little bit... Can she read? I mean, it seems like she just woke up when... Because she's like, what's going on here when... It was yeah, she was away. a little disoriented. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's true. <clears throat> so, I don't know if she was really cognizant. Yeah, she might not realize that that was him. Yeah. Well, I could try it. Well, I can communicate. I could bring down a peace offering. What do you think? Well, I was be? saying I could bring down a peace offering even for her. Well, maybe we could go together. It sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, she'll definitely remember you, though. And that she... might she might see that as a threat. You know, she told us not to not to come back. She might be okay with it. Well, I can I can stay hidden. I would be more comfortable going as your backup but aunt owen always could charm her well somehow <laughs> um, i also have this really handy spell that i was contemplating last night um but if if something goes down i can just put a message in the sky for you okay as long as i can get back to the bottom of the tunnel then you'll know to come in Okay. So your plan is to just go down there as Elwyn and, and kind of persuade them to go elsewhere, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Could you just make a uh, persuasion or animal handling check? Could you also ask them about directions to the Nexus? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. If, we'll if wrap that into the same check. I will. Isn't Charm going with so you can get like a help action or something? The Eagle Splendor? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I was going to Eagle Splendor. Okay, my there, you go. there you go. To give myself advantage on charisma checks so uh, you said it could be persuasion or animal handling yep so oh. you could give yourself the wisdom yeah version. i'll give myself wisdom because animal handling handling is better oh. okay you know what's sad amber's animal handling is also way better than her persuasion oh no <laughs> it's only one oh, point difference mind. it's only one point difference for me but oh shit. Ooh. nothing to see here okay um so a dirty 20. Dirty 20, okay. Um, yeah, uh, you kind of have to enter into some, like, tough negotiations with the queen. Um, she tries to, like, see if she can get, like, some food supplies for the colony as they're leaving. Um, but you manage to convince her to take the colony elsewhere and allow the humans to return to this area, basically. Um the other thing you were asking for was directions. Directions to the Nexus. Um, she will offer you a worker ant whose name is... Oh, boy. We have a pet ant. Let's see. Anton? Uh, Santiago. <laughs> yep. Um, offers Not you Santa. A, no Santiago. Uh, <laughs> offers you an, a worker ant named Santiago, um, who can try to help guide you down. Though she seems a little bit skeptical of whether the scent lines will be strong enough at this point. Uh, and the rest of the colony, basically over the next few days, packs up and leaves. 
and do they, do they return all the like boxes of stuff that um is that something Elwyn would have asked them to help with yeah i mean yeah if that's something that the group decided we mm -hmm. think so it's i just, mean it's, it's just building parts and like all sorts of rubble and things yeah. right like and try to animals see. animals um, like we might not get the animals back. Home. Maybe half of the animals. I mean, as much as possible. If yeah. you if you allow them to take some of the animals, yeah. they will so carry the rest take, up. You can as... take some of them, but let, leave us some so that we can start somewhere. Yeah. Start to... yeah, if you allow them to take some of the animals, they will carry the rest back up, um, along with any like vital objects that yeah. you specify. Mm -hmm. Imagine yeah. what the cows yeah. are like telling their children, I have the craziest thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. They they will do that for you, and then over the next couple of days they begin to migrate off. Okay. Um, how did the group of you go about getting word out to surrounding towns where refugees might be? I have one little question, detailed question. Yeah, right. Does she? Oh, shoot. Does the, yeah, I could do that. Does the ant queen seem? I don't know anything about Snork being gone. Like, did she have any attachment to Snork? She seemed distressed when she saw him knocked out or dead, you know, down yeah. in the, the anthill. Um, but she doesn't really ask further about him. It seems like when the hood was pried off of her, she kind of dropped a couple intelligence levels. Mm -hmm. So it seems to have kind of faded from her short-term memory at this point. Yeah. yeah. She's more back on, back on instinct rather mm -hmm. than... That makes sense. <clears throat> Got it. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, I mean, how far can Skyrite be seen? Uh, That'd be really cool. I'm gonna look at it. Amber Heart is safe. Yeah. Whoa. Kind of. Ants are gone. Giant billboard. Yeah, now that I'm like, I have this thing I can do, you guys. <laughs> is it one word? It is one word. It's one word? <laughs> The word Skyrite, sky right? yeah. yeah. Oh. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. You can only Skyrite. <laughs> no, no, no. no. <laughs> Man, that's Up to one. ten words, it says. Safe. <laughs> oh, and it's a ritual spell, so I don't even need ten it. words. That's pretty good. Immediate openings in Emberheart. Denizens of Emberheart. The, bird, the, bird, the words appear to be made of cloud and remain in place for their spell's duration. The words dissipate when the spell ends. A strong wind can disperse the clouds and end the spell early. And it lasts for an hour. Um, I will say the duration will probably be halved because of the strong winds the yeah. strong going on winds. right now. But but I could it's... also cast it because I have it's a ritual spell. I yeah. could be casting it constantly. I could just yeah, be up on the roof say. casting it. I think word will get up pretty quick, but I would expect it. And this, this yeah, we'll so I could do that, yeah. Okay. Um, and I'll just put up on the sky um, Ember Hearth is free of are free, free from danger come home okay or it's safe to come home That's yeah enough. that fits it's within 10 come home yeah just barely mm -hmm. um Emberheart is free from danger it is safe to it's safe to come home if the contraction <laughs> i'll allow it counts as one word. <laughs> safe to come home i'll allow it as one it's safe come home whatever um either way it fits just barely uh and it's in very legible but very clean and neat kind of swirly cloudy hand um, a little snowflake <laughs> yeah i was just gonna say it's like it looks like crystallized clouds the right? eyes are dotted with snowflake yes. shapes <laughs> <laughs> um yeah over what seems like the next few days um you start to see from your vantage point on the hill the signs of people kind of trickling back this direction warily. Um, and uh, you, maybe, I mean, maybe you go out and meet a few of them, and they seem, I mean, they seem pretty wary at first, but, like, as soon as, like, they get into the town and they see that the ants are gone, they, um, yeah, they begin to uh, kind of, they. it seems like a lot of them go to where their former homes were and, like, assess the damage and some of them already get to work starting to like rebuild um and so you can already start to see the signs of people trickling back in and starting to rebuild um around that time well actually i think we'll do it this way first um
Yeah. Um, as people start to trickle back in, uh, eventually a knock comes on the keep door while the group of you are kind of you know, back at your keep. Uh, I'll get the door as my new disguise, uh, which is an older gentleman wearing like a butler's outfit, and his nice. name is Bachelor. Bachelor. <laughs> yes. And uh, he'll open the door. Yes, how can I help you? Um, standing in the door is a centaur woman. Um, find her description. She has a big smile on her face. Um, she's got this kind of the back half of her body has this like chestnut brown fur, um, and then the hair on her head is kind of a light brownish color. Uh, and it's up in like a messy bun. She has bright yellow eyes. Um, and yeah, like I said, she's got this big grin on her face. Um, and she says, Well, hi there. Uh, my name is Lalfira, but you can call me Lally. Everybody does. Lally? Lally, yep. Lalfira? Lalfira. Lalfira. L A L T H I R A. And she likes to go by Lally. L A L L Y. Okay. Uh, I'm a, I'm, I, I know that the group of you are new here in town, and I've, I've heard just incredible things from the people who first trickled into the city. Uh, they were saying things like, you drove off the ants. Um, and, and now I'm, I'm a representative of the Farmers Guild, and you can see that she has like a denim apron on her front that is just filled with farming and gardening tools. Um, and she's wearing that over, like, a, a plaid button-up. Um, I'm a representative of the Farmers Guild here in the city, and, uh, I've, well, I've got a seat on the Community Council, and we would just be delighted to have the group of you come and sit in on uh, our first reconvening of the City Council in the, the next couple days as the remaining members of the Council kind of trickle back into town. We're working on getting word out to them. Uh, not everyone's back yet. Uh, but we'll we'll have a quick little uh, council meeting uh, down in Hearth Hall, um, just to you know get back on our feet, uh, start organizing the reconstruction of the town, uh, and we were just thinking it'd be uh, those of us who have come back into town. We're thinking it'd be a delight if the group of you um, uh, would come and join us for that. Is it just you at the door, or are we all there? I don't know. I mean, I guess this kind of this conversation could have been brought into like the yeah. waiting room or something. Yeah, if you brought her in, then she would have said it to everyone. Let, but... let me. Call the master. <laughs> oh, Lady Elwyn, I'm lost. Oh, my apologies. Lady. I just assumed you were one of the owners, new owners of the keep. My, my apologies. Yeah, and then yeah, uh, yeah he'll, he'll gather everybody, and then we'll have that conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I thank you very, tea very kindly for the invitation. We would love to accept. Oh yeah, yeah. We can hook it on over there. Oh, and yes, Charm, of course, you're welcome. Uh, Charm, you would have met uh, Lally before, I think, probably at least briefly. Yeah. She probably gets honey from Dot's hives, mm. so you would have been, you know, responsible for delivering that to her. Um, yeah, of, of course, um, the previous Lord of the Manor, he had a seat on the council. Um, I, see. I, I don't know whether that now transfers to the group of you. It'll be something we have to talk about, but... Of course. Of course. Um, it, it's possible that y you may be allowed, not necessarily required, but, you know, ha have the chance to cast votes on the council, if you wish. Um, it's something we have to discuss, so... Of course, understandably. Yeah. Uh, Lord Mr. Lath, uh, rest his soul. Uh, he was he was a, a fine member of the council, and um, yes, we'd be happy to have you. So. Well, we would be delighted to join. Thank you very much for coming all this way to invite us. And, uh, my apologies, I've been so rude. What were your names again? Well, we are the Silver Seekers. My name is Lady Elwyn Amalos, heir to House Amalos, minister of the Old Faith and Shepherd of the Tundra, but you may call me Lady Elwyn. That's quite the mouthful. I only got the first part. So. <laughs> it's quite all right. She's kind of the lady of the manor. She gives you kind of a low curtsying bow type thing. Uh, I'm her bodyguard, Empress of White Ash. Uh, yeah, nice to meet you. Pleased to meet you. I think we lost the, we lost the internet Chromecast the connection. Yeah. Um, it won't affect the stream, I don't think, but no. it means the players can't hear the music. We just lost the internet. It's okay. Oh, did we? Mm-hmm. 
Okay. Well, that's all right. Yeah. That means no music. Just means okay. the music stopped. Let me keep going. It'll come um, back. Yes. Minutes. Pardon the lack of music. <laughs> It'll come back eventually. Um. Yeah. And so she kind of goes around meeting everyone. Uh, well, the council meeting will be in a couple days, um, like I said, when everyone gets back into town. And um, either I or maybe one of the other council members will come and uh, give you more details when we have, uh, you know, a firmer date and time in mind. Great. That sounds wonderful. Great. Excellent. Well, it's been a pleasure meeting you. i got to go check on my crops. I still haven't really been back to my farms. so I would love to come see your farm sometime, too. Yeah, of course. Um, my farms are up in kind of the northern edge of town, but... Great. Um, yeah, a group of you are welcome anytime. Charm, of course, you know the way you can you could show them. Thanks. Good to see you again. Um, I'll see you to the door, Lady Valley. <laughs> no, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, and she uh, kind of gives you a, a final wave and a big smile and trots off. <laughs> oh, I think it's she's back. a charming neighbor. Yeah. It's back. I was about to turn around my hot spot. <laughs> Neighbor. Neighbor. Oh, oh, I didn't know that there were going to be horse people here. <laughs> you can. You, you don't have to come to the council meeting if it makes you uncomfortable. Well, I'm your bodyguard, I better go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Night Mantis just kind of goes, she sure did talk about a mile a minute, didn't she? <laughs> Seemed nice though. <laughs> uh, yeah, Embers has a thing with horses. We're kind of working on it. It's okay. Mm -hmm. it's okay. Too, I guess. Yeah, just don't look below her waist. Sure. You know. <laughs> but polite thing to do anyway. Exactly. Um, you begin to also see um, the mines that you visited that had kind of the, you know, the dwarvens, the remains of a dwarven settlement there. Uh, you begin to see activity down there as well as dwarves begin to return to the town and they begin to you know, kind of go back into the mines and uh, take up their residence there again. Um, and yeah, the rebuilding kind of begins. Um, do the group of you do anything to kind of assist with that? Yeah, I definitely would go down there and help, help out. Okay. Yeah, once once it's clear that I don't have to maintain the the message in the sky anymore. Yeah, I think oh. you probably had to keep it up there for a couple days, but yeah. at that point it seems like word began, they began to spread word on their own, and right. people started pouring in quicker and quicker. Yeah. When it disperses, do, does the message become kind of funny? <laughs> to say something slightly different? <laughs> I, it, it might fuzz a bit. I don't know. Yeah, same, Different same. words. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I think. But yeah, um, I'd go down and help as much as I could. Yeah, I would be able to cast mending and do any such Use my light spell casting. I powers to create supports and stuff. Well, nice. Yeah. Uh, well, the the people of the city seem really grateful for your help, um, and it seems like pretty much wherever you go to lend aid, there's work to be done. I could transform um, into big creatures to help lug, lug things. Yeah. yeah, there's lots of work to be done. Um, you could, I mean, you can go rebuild things. You can go kind of get crops planted again, because it looks like the ants kind of tore up fields and things like that. I feel like there's a spell I have that could help with that, too. Oh, yeah. I was trying, trying to lug my spells. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Channels vitality in plants within a specific area. That would be really useful. Mm -hmm. Which spell is that? Plant growth. I can cast it over eight hours. Maybe. Well, I only have two third level slots. Well, it's not like we're adventuring right now. Yeah. And I guess I can get a third level spot back after a short rest. Yeah, and with each oh, eight-hour casting cast of it, if you spell over eight hours, you enrich the land. All plants in a half-mile radius centered on the fort within range become enriched for one year. Plants yield twice the normal amount of food. So yeah, I'll I'll be doing that. That would be hugely helpful to the farmers. 
Um, I think particularly Lally would probably kind of show you around um, the specific areas that would benefit the most from that. Um, yeah, that's I would take her up on her offer to go and see the area because that's kind of my area of expertise as well. Yeah, I'll be like, hey, do you mind if I just hang out here for for a while? And it looks I'd like, like um, there's I mean there's like farms that grow everything from like I mean the main thing is like grain and wheat. But there's farms that grow like corn and pumpkins and potatoes yeah. and um, all kinds of different things. I mean, it's here. all plants in a half mile radius. Yeah. So depending on how big the farm is, I may only have to do it once or twice. Well, there's lots of farms yeah. around the area. And then even beyond that, there's um, a couple of vineyards as well. Mm. So you probably have to kind of travel from mm -hmm. place to place. We do it over a, over a couple over days. Over a few days, yeah. yeah. I'll just let her point me in the direction of what would be the most, most useful thing to... <laughs> Uh, and you guys begin to see the land flourish more and more as well, as Ellen does this. Um, as well as a couple of the buildings begin to come back up. Embers, you find um, a building you were familiar with, the, mm -hmm. the city's tavern, uh, is in shambles. There was actually a anthill that came up in the middle of the tavern, but it looks like it went mostly unused by the ants. Mm -hmm. um, the tavern was known as the Deep Dive. <laughs> um and now there's this big now it's a ant really hill deep dive. in the middle of it. Um, but the deeper dive. You haven't seen any sign of like the tavern's keeper, mm -hmm. who honestly you don't remember yeah. very well because um, it's a little bit fuzzy. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, you find that building in a little bit of shambles. You could kind of work on putting that back together. Yeah. Bert, um, I don't know. What would you? Torin would be interested in as far as what like, helping to okay, rebuild. Yeah. Oh yes. Yeah. Torin would help with that. Torin probably kind of sticks to Embers. Yeah, I think like Embers isn't the strongest person in the world, um, so I think that she's kind of like I don't want to say supervising and not doing anything, not just saying like do that, do that. But she's like kind of guiding Torin a lot. Yeah, he can do all of the heavy yeah. lifting. That's fine. I think it's a thing where like Embers just tries to do stuff, and Torin's like, "Let me help with that," and then just doesn't. Mm -hmm. He, um, he's he's really into following Embers around because she was the one who convinced him to come and do some good, so mm -hmm. he's looking to you for that yeah, example, yeah. basically. So yes. that makes a lot of sense to me. Um, and Charm, uh, Dot would kind of go back to... He had a little, little cabin closer to his hives. Um, he would go back to that area rather than staying at the keep. Um, do you want to go with him or do you want to stay at the keep? Um, I guess I'll have a little powwow with the group and say, now that you're established, this is my former residence with Dot. Do you need my assistance here as Sentry still? I could stay here if it is your wish. I reckon you're welcome to stay up at, at the keep with us if, if that's what you want. We We would love to have you. We well, appreciate your efforts, but if you would rather return home, it's... Yeah, if you've got a home, we're not demanding you leave your home. Neither is my home. I was staying with Doc for convenience, because, but this was my job before you moved in. Well, what do you want to do? I, I would prefer to keep my sentry duties. Then you are still... Yeah. You still have a job with us. I'm very grateful. <laughs> Oh, um, they probably just need to restart it. It's going to though. Yeah. Well, yeah, it has to do with like, because whenever you refresh yeah. roll twenty. Did you refresh roll twenty? Three times. Did you refresh problem? Oh no, it's coming through. Yeah. No, whenever, no, whenever. Okay. We're good. We're good. Roll twenty is refreshed. I have to restart it on here, or it yeah. stops coming through. Yes. Yeah. So it's not picking it up in the browser. It's just picking up the browser. Yeah, it is. I think it's going through the speakers, maybe. That's desktop audio. It's not good. Oh, uh, maybe you're right. I don't know. Whatever. Well, it's fine. if it's not perfect, it's fine. We're getting used <laughs> to our in-person setup again. Yeah. Bear with us. So I have kind of a long-term thing I wanted to start establishing with Bert, which was I wanted to create a bunch of unnameable disguises that aren't really that important that are just like helping around like the baker's area or 
a library or like, hmm. whatever, just to kind of start like an information network around Amberheart. Just some like different citizens in various yeah, positions, just various okay. little odd jobs and, and helper things, and just yeah. So you, when you're helping out, you're not helping out as just one person. You're helping out as a bunch of different people in yeah, different areas. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you can you can definitely. I mean, roll. Ooh, like a. Charisma plus proficiency. Yeah, so I have this feat. I don't know if it would help me with this or not. But when we hit level four, I think I took. Uh, let's see, I took actor. Sounds like it would help. Mm. And uh, since I have advantage on deception and performance checks, I'm trying to pass off as a different person mm -hmm. and you can mimic the speech of another person or the sounds made by other creatures that you've heard. Yeah, you would have advantage on this check. Then. Okay. And then you want me to do what is it? Just do. We'll do it as a performance check then. Performance or okay. Or deception, either one. Check my skills. Since those are the ones supported by the actor fee. Yeah. So I have. I don't have perform. I do have deception. That's a plus seven. So that's a natural twenty. <laughs> oh snap! <laughs> okay. Yeah, you. So it's twenty-seven. Um. You managed to create five personas, I would say, successfully uh, throughout the town in various positions. Can I have one of them be at like the council hall area, like a receptionist or something? Or... Yeah. Okay. So as you go to seed yourself at the council hall, um, what you learn is... Uh, let me find the information about Hearth Hall. It's going to be really funny when Bird's going to be like, nope, got to go do my job at the bakers. I'll be back later. <laughs> it's like these random things every day. You learn that Hearth Hall is basically one of the oldest buildings in the city. Um, and it kind of functions as both like the meeting chambers for the community council, but it also serves a more important purpose. Um, by custom, any travelers who come through uh, the city or people who are homeless um, are welcome to stay in rooms that are situated there and um, kind of warm themselves by the the large hearth that gives the place its name, which is this massive stone hearth that has a vein of amber in it. Mm. Um, and basically is for the most part staffed by volunteers. So they pretty much welcome anyone, and there's kind of a tradition of like parents sending their children there to help with cooking and cleaning and stuff for the visitors. Um, so there is like plenty of room, especially right now where, where so many people's houses are kind of destroyed um, for volunteers to help out there. And all, the volunteer efforts are coordinated by a centaur man, uh, who I will describe for you. Find his description. Um, kind of a middle-aged looking centaur. Um, he's got, uh, his back has gray hair spotted with black. Um, and for his top half, he has a uh, lighter skin with kind of rosy undertones and blue eyes. Um, he's got a hairless face, uh, but a long mane of white hair that he wears down his back in a braid. Um, and he's usually seen wearing like a, a marigold covered apron over his clothes. And he, his name is Phileas, but he goes by Old Phil. Uh, and he pretty much coordinates the volunteer efforts. So if you go and find Old Phil... Uh, he will he'll take you in and uh, get that persona up and running in the community uh, in Hearth Hall. All right, works yep. for me. Um, okay, and you can send me any details on those personas that you want. All five of them. If I need to. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we can also keep them nebulous, and you can just define them as you need to. Yeah. So. Yeah, be fine. Uh, okay. So as the weeks begin to pass and Amber, Amber Hearth begins to rebuild, um, you get a note setting a date for the uh, community council meeting, the reconvening now that everyone seems to be back in town. Um, and we'll say they set it for the first of, let's see, I need the months in order. The first week of the month of I, uh, which is coming up. So. so, since the 
when Nexus thing was kind of a priority, does that happen within this rebuild effort? Did we take some time to go down and... Oh, um, my assumption was that in the immediate moment, uh, the, most of the ant hills would be kind of collapsed so that the wind stops coming up, um, or at least coming up as, uh -huh. as violently. Um, and then you could rebuild the town and then kind of organize your effort to go down to, into the underground. Yeah, I guess. I'm going to say uh -huh. maybe before we... You know, when Elwyn is busy holding the Skyrite spell to get, call all the residents in, maybe it would have been a good idea for Charm to go with, um, who's our friend, Santiago, into the tunnels to kind of try and find the way a little bit, as far as Santiago knows, while the trail is still fresh. The other thing I was thinking is that because Stork was saying that their, I guess, previous master is still searching for detail, I feel like we should beat him to the punch. Like, if there's something that we can uncover and take from it so he can't get it. That's possible. Then I would rather do that instead of waiting several days or weeks or whatever it is. Um, Charm also has the ability to sense. Um, she's got primeval sense, so she can sense when dragons are near and things like that. So oh. we can sense when we're getting close. What's the range on that? I don't have it. Is it five miles? That. That'd be awesome. <laughs> One mile. Really? Oh, wait. Or oh. within up to six miles. Oh, my God. I'm in my favorite terrain. Which is anthills? <laughs> I just have a favorite thing. My favorite terrain. So I'll have to look at. <laughs> You're not helping. I know. I'm trying to pull up the character sheet. Sorry. It doesn't really say their location or their number, but at least I can tell close. Well, I would expect the sense would get stronger as you get closer, right? Mm -hmm. For some indication. Let's see. Favored. Primeval awareness. Sense any. Yeah, this would work. Um, favored terrain. Where would that be listed? I don't remember. Where would you pick that? I would think it would be desert, desert though, though really, from where she's from. You know, arid dry Is place. something you pick at the beginning? When you pick I see your favorite thing. enemy. Mm hmm Where does it come later? <coughs> uh, favorite enemy. Primeval awareness. It's under the Natural Explorer feed. Yeah. Oh, which has been switched to Deft, Deft Explorer. Explorer. So you didn't pick a favored terrain because you have Deft Explorer instead of mm. Natural Explorer. But yeah, I would say your favorite terrain would be Desert, so it probably wouldn't apply in this case. So it'd be one still. Yep. But that's good, though. I mean, one mile still yeah. really mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. um, if you wanted to, morning. if you wanted to scout out kind of a lead charm, you could make a survival check with advantage using Santiago's help or Santiago's skills. <coughs> Her survival would be better than mm, okay. Santiago's stats. It's plus nine to sixteen. Okay. No, that's eighteen. I think. I don't know. Oh, yeah, that's 16. Okay. okay. So, so 25. 25. Okay, yeah. Um, without descending fully into the Underdark yourself, you managed to scout a path. Um, you know, maybe like the first mile down. I guess that would put you in kind of the tip of the shallow dark. Um, yeah, and you think you've got a pretty good trail established. You think you could find your way there. Great. Awesome. Okay. That's great. That's great. So that's a good thing to do the first week. Mm -hmm. As far as trying to beat him to the punch, it didn't... Correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like we didn't get the sense that he was close to uncovering anything, right? No, he it sounded... Very yeah. frustrated because he couldn't figure it out. It sounded, from what Snork said, like... And from what you've observed with the winds already, he succeeded in you know, unsealing this to yeah. some extent. But mm -hmm. there were... There's more... 
he's unsatisfied with the extent to which they've been able to unseal it and is in trying yeah in general and is basically using this opportunity to like try and study more so it's not like we need to okay. beat him with the i understand yeah. he's already done the thing he's okay. done the thing thanks for clarifying yeah. so we have studied. time to kind of prepare that's okay then for the next yep. leg of okay. the journey yeah no i'm good with the okay okay um then yeah um some time uh you know, you start to draw close to the, you know, the first week of I when this community council is going to be held, and um, something happens as oh, you're boy. one uh, one night when you're all gathered in the keep. Um, Weaver, I told you to leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> Not the Weaver this time. Beaver. Beaver. <laughs> it's a beaver. Uh, tell me about. Perfect. You're the group's nightly routine. When might everyone be gathered together? I mean, meal time, right? Meal time, yeah. Meal time. Okay. Um, you're having a meal. You're kind of discussing the various things you did throughout the day, um, you know, to help the town and you, the various preparations you might want to make. Oh, oh God. Quite right? It is the beaver. <laughs> it is um, the beaver. <laughs> we'll go with this one. The various preparations you might want to make in order to, you know, uh, make your trip down into the Underdark. And... There is a flash of light in the room, a big flash of bright light that kind of illuminates everything. Oh my god, is it? And uh, when the light subsides, there is a figure standing on top of the dinner table. Uh, she uh -huh. has knocked aside several of the dishes. Um, a human woman, but she is holding a rapier out and seems to be mid-rapier swing when the flash happens. Um... And she kind of like takes out one of the bottom uh, sh crystals of the chandelier <laughs> accidentally with the like follow through of the swing before she even notices her surroundings. Um, let me describe her. I thought it was Riz. <laughs> I don't know if Riz is still alive at this point. I felt oh, cold yeah, that long. Right. She was, has he was old. Yeah. <laughs> a short bob of black, uh, like jet black hair with a streak of blonde kind of goes to the right side of her face um she's wearing like very put together um black clothes for the most part blacks whites and navy blues seem to be her her colors she's got um like a very a very nice like well-pressed shirt buttoned up with navy blue buttons um let's see she has a very round face um kind of palish skin uh, with a little bit of a rosy color to it. Um, a sharp, almost like hooked nose. Um, uh, yeah, and she has just like this. She's wearing like a dark skirt and a collared blouse. Uh, and she is in the middle of this rapier swing and she has on her hand a bracelet that has like a pink gem set into it. Um, which flashed along with the, the big burst of light, uh, but then kind of went back to a subtle glow uh, as that resolves. Um, and she takes in the group of you uh, after this first rapier swing, and she kind of looks around the room. Oh dear! Oh dear! I'm, I'm so sorry! I'm like, I'm like reaching for her rapier to no, get she... away from her. <laughs> oh, okay, make a... Um... Let me pull up her stats. <laughs> Uh, we'll just do athletics. Okay. Oh no, D and D Beyond is currently undergoing maintenance. Great. Oh, is that why? <laughs> what okay. is it today? Oh. <laughs> hey, don't have her stats on hand, but she rolled a sixteen. I rolled an eighteen. Okay, we'll go with you win. Uh, you managed to snatch the rapier out of her hand, and uh, she goes, "Ah, that was a gift from my father." Okay. Well, you stop swinging. You can have it back. Well, I wasn't swinging it at any of you. I was swinging it at the pirates, but uh, I guess they're gone now. I mean, insight check? Yeah. <laughs> I believe her, but insight check. Yeah, also. Uh, 22. Um, yeah, there's no pirates here, but she seems <laughs> like she believes she was swinging it at pirates. I was going to put it away, I promise. Embers, I think you can give it back. She takes it and yeah. kind of gives you an eye, but like... Puts it back Apologies, she's she's my bodyguard, so she gets a little jumpy when there are weapons drawn. 
But that's that's understandable, and I. I Listen. Also, when strange people teleport into our house. Exactly. I was happens. I was going to get to that. I'm. Uh, I apologize for what. And Ryan just points at the dinner table she's standing on. I did not mean to interrupt your dinner. In fact, let me get down off this table, uh, and she backs <laughs> off of the table. I can't exactly control where I end up. You see, I have a very rare condition called teleportitis. <laughs> um, this bracelet makes sure I don't end up in like the bottom of the ocean or a volcano, um, but really. I, I don't have any control over where I'm going to end up most of the time. Have I ever heard of that before? Uh, Arcana check. Sure. I actually know what my Arcana is. I rolled a one. So Bert has no what? idea, but he's very intrigued. Uh, Did 13. you ever meet Briz? Briz was before Mara. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, I I know what it is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Charm doesn't. Yeah. Uh, 13. Um, yeah, you might have briefly heard about it but don't know specifically how it works right. you know that it's a condition very rare right and it has the side effect of someone teleporting you randomly that's right. not all you know. all right all right yeah everything tracks so far mm -hmm. well i i'm sorry to hear that and uh, uh are you hungry actually you know i am uh what? i was in the in the brig for a little while uh they fed me slop but well, um uh, hopefully this is... i was in the middle of busting out you succeeded. Clearly. Ha have um, a seat. <laughs> yeah, she kind of pulls up a chair. Uh, where is it I found myself, and what are your names? Uh, uh, I should introduce myself as well. I'm Nadia Aveline. Yes, that Nadia Aveline. History checks. <laughs> we all just kind of gave Ethan yeah. a look, like a raised eyebrow look. Nine. Thirteen. <laughs> Natural one. <laughs> Um, oh, seven. No, it ten, actually. makes sense that um, it probably rings a bell for right. Embers, but this is not a notable figure of the Stration Empire, so it makes sense that you mm -hmm. wouldn't have necessarily heard of her um, in detail. Vert, I think it makes sense that you would be the one who knows any detail about her. Uh, she is the daughter of the royal family of Freyden. Oh. Her father is Thaddeus Constantine, <laughs> and her mother is Dawn Arandora. Um... How did Thaddeus' daughter end up with teleportitis? <laughs> it's a great question. We're about to find out, I guess. Oh, boy. Yeah, she's royalty. So, so Vert, like, <laughs> when she says the name, he, uh, he's like, princess? Um, I'm, I mean, I guess, yeah, I'm the youngest of three, so my older siblings, technically, I think they're more in line for the throne than I am, but I technically... And uh, so we're, we'll... She's, are you going to eat that? Can, can you pass that over the, the potatoes? They look good. Pass the potatoes. <laughs> dishing up. While she's dishing it, Bert will introduce the princess of Freyden to the, the party. What an absolute pleasure to have a princess pop into our dinner dinner table. No, the, the pleasure is really all mine. This is much better than my previous situation. So. <laughs> You're Ember, quite fine. Like it. over. Princess popping. I like it. <laughs> Embers leans over to Charm. Are you a princess? <laughs> in uh, in the Spellstar Desert. By no means. Because this keeps happening. <laughs> by no means. Okay. You okay. have found yourself quite a ways from home. Uh, you're in the Stration Empire. Okay. I've been there before. Yeah. This is uh, Amber Hearth. I haven't been there before. In the middle of... Where are we? Not Ardalir. Ardalir. That's it. Oh! Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, that rings a bell. I, I've, I think I do have, uh, yes, a vague idea of where that is. Um, Southern part. There, there's passages down, right? Here? Uh, deep into the earth? Into the Underdark? Yeah, down here Yes. Recently. In fact, hmm. yes. Yeah, I know where we are. Mm hmm Yeah. Oh, okay. That's good to know. That's great. This is excellent. <laughs> and, uh, you found yourself in the home of the Silver Seekers. Well, it is a true pleasure, and thank you for being generous with your food, just right off the bat. Not everyone is. Can we send messenger drinks to Freyden to let them know their princess is safe here? Um, you probably could. They could make the distance, but yeah. um, yours is still a really baby. Yeah. yeah. Or if we, we need some another training. one. Okay. There, there will be a messenger drake service set up in the city but yeah once it gets rebuilt it's yeah, yeah I think we're going to offer that like it... oh no that's okay um my 
you know, my mother and father, um, they're always so busy and, you know, running the country and uh, they know that I can kind of end up wherever. It's just been a thing since I was little. So really, I just check in with them whenever I'm, you know, back in the area. It, it's no big deal. Imagine that he's sweating bullets right now. <laughs> Is this an inherited condition? No. Um, it, it's a little bit of a mystery, actually, how it's transferred or you know, generated in people. But my dad blames my aunt. Um, I don't think it's her fault. She's the only one who's been able to make it better. And she points at the bracelet. <laughs> it's already So. Huh. That seems like a really inconvenient way to live. You know, it's really not so bad. Um, like I said, my aunt has done a lot to help me overcome. She, she has some experience with, you know, the tides of chaos. So she's <laughs> been actually a huge help. She gave me this bracelet. It makes it so I never teleport anywhere terribly bad. And uh, I can always, uh, if I want to, um, when a certain, you know, when, when one of these events triggers, I can, you know, choose to go back to her. Uh, she lives in Redwater. Don't know if you've heard of it, but no, nice place. Um, yeah, and I've got, she gave me this, um, she's got like this satchel on her and she brings it up. She gave me this bag. She made it. Um, and it, she kind of opens it up and there's like a starry interdimensional space in there. This is just packed with, you know, survival gear. So Honestly, I'm really used to it. It's really no big deal. Um, I am well equipped to deal with wherever I might end up. Okay. Even the brig of a pirate ship. Mm-hmm. That's not the weirdest place I've ever been before. <laughs> so. At one time I was teleported to the top of a volcano that was covered in slime. Weird. Oh. <laughs> I am dead. <laughs> dead. You killed that me. Kami, Kami Island or yeah. You've killed me. I'm officially dead. <laughs> We're relaxed a little bit knowing that they're not going to cause like an international crisis. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so what can we do for you, if anything? Um, she kind of looks around at the group of you. and uh, Some gravy? Oh, thank you. Yeah, that'll be great on... Yeah, what kind of meat is this? I don't know. Never mind. It doesn't matter. She pours <laughs> gravy on it. Um, oh, well, the, the group of you, you look... Um, you look actually like my ideal clientele, if I'm being honest. Um, usually when I find a group who has kind of the look of you, um, I try to set up a shop in town. Uh, you, do you know if there would be room in town for me to set up a little shop? What would you be selling? Oh, I work with my aunt. She runs a magic item shop. Uh, and so, you know, I, I end up in lots of places and it's a natural tool for expansion for Harmony's Wild Magics. Uh, so wherever I, whenever I end up with kind of a, a group like yourselves, who might be, um, you know, clientele for the sorts of things that we can provide, um, you know, uh, usually she likes to come and, you know, meet the clients herself. But um, last I heard from her, there was kind of a, a small tear in reality in her shop that she was trying to deal with before it sucked in the city. So... <laughs> Um, just another day in yeah, her life. Actually, it is just another day in her life. So, um, yeah, I don't know if she'll be able to come in person, but I can set up a little shop and, you know, that's what I, I, I guess I'll stay here until the next event. And, and would you be hiring somebody to, to man the shop? Oh, no, I, I can do that or, myself. Well, oh. not to be insensitive, but if your condition flares up again. Um, well, I mean, I take pretty much everything with me in the bag. Oh, so, so with the traveling shop then yeah um, i mean I, ideally i'd leave a, a rented building here and then whenever i'm in town i can you know flip the sign to open i understand, I understand. is there a way to contact you if you have um well we do sell a fine uh set of items called sending stones <laughs> uh you could purchase some of those communicate with me if you wanted to um of course that would be up to you and your coin purse We'd have to pay her to contact her? That wouldn't be up to... The, you wouldn't be willing to, like, donate that to the city for your, you know, customer base? I'd have to talk to the boss. It could maybe be arranged. We've, okay. we've done similar situations before, but... Well, there's a lot of empty space in town right now. We're actually rebuilding after well, a big attack. We are going to the first council meeting after the rebuilding, so we can bring it up with them and see... Perfect. If Seems they're I... interested, I don't know how big of a client base there would be for such things here um 
I'm certainly interested. Honestly, we found that even just one stable group of adventurers, you know, people like yourselves, uh, is enough to sustain business in a city. So even if there's not a huge client base outside of yourselves, we'll do fine. And uh, my aunt, uh, my aunt, her name's Harmony. Uh, she's great. Um, she makes, she's made quite a few sort of common magic items that, you know, kind of work as like party tricks. People tend to like those, even if they're not going around, you know, looking to purchase um, magic weapons or armor or what have you. So. Great. That sounds like good fun. And you're welcome to stay here with us until, well, for as long as you need, until you get your own setup figured out. Well, that that's very kind of you. I mean, uh, she reaches into the bag and pulls out, like, a tent pole. I, I've got accommodations in here, but, uh, you know, I'll take staying in a keep, a fancy manor, any day of the sure, week. We can, so we can figure yeah. something out. Yeah. Find a space. We've got plenty of space here. We do have plenty of space here. Great. Then, yeah, I'd gladly take you up on that. Of course. Can I get seconds? Of course, of course. <laughs> she takes more of the food. <laughs> Well, just fascinated. So I really want to know how you ended up on the ship with the pirates. Um, well, I mean, how I got there, the usual story, right? Teleported and ended up there. Mm -hmm. um, they were not really happy to have me on their ship. Um, I think we were, I think we were in the Coral Sea, sort of off the coast of the Elderhaven Reaches. Um, not a hundred percent sure on that. I never got confirmation, but. <laughs> Um, they weren't happy to have me, threw me in the brig for a little while. I was, oh gosh, I was rallying a resistance. Um, poor Ned, <laughs> left behind. I hope, he, I hope he got off ship. Um, it'll be fine. Wow. <laughs> we're all back on straight. Have you ever been down to Iand before? Oh yeah, yeah, a couple times. Yeah, Real cold. Um... You know, kind of like a couple of the bigger cities. I've been dropped into the tundra there. Not really sure where that was about, but, you know, there's just such vast tundra there. It could have been anywhere. Yeah, I'm very aware. Uh, I'm from uh, the Oasis down there. Um, area. She nods and says, I've actually heard of this place. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Um... I think I, it came up in, um, well, I, I like these books, you see, and she kind of reaches into her bag and she pulls out a book um, titled The Engine of Chaos, um, and the author is listed uh, as Luathra Arkenre. Um, and she says, there's this author I like, um, she writes Art of Fiction, ever heard of it? Art of Fiction? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, like Artificer Fiction. Um, oh, ho, ho. You know, kind of science versus magic versus you know, it, it's Amazing. it's really interesting. And my favorite author, uh, well, she's an she's an elven woman. What was the uh, name again? Luathra Arkenray. Yep. And I think the Oasis came up in one of her books at one point, just briefly mentioned. I think I think her talking about these books is like the first time that Ember softens her at all. She's <laughs> and it's just very like very wary like what is happening who are you <laughs> type of position this whole time mm -hmm. not really mollified by any of the explanations given but like when she starts talking about oh, my favorite book she's like I read that one. <laughs> um yeah that's actually why i perked up when um, i realized you know where i was because amber hearth if i recall correctly is not eh, not exactly directly but close to directly over uh erudition which is where luathra is from Oh! Which is pretty amazing. That's the name of the, the draft settlement, right? I'm yeah. asking mm -hmm. you. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Great. I've always wanted to go. Oh, well, we're actually planning a trip down there soon. Her eyes go wide. If you wanted to join us. I would love to join you. Great. If you're still here. If, you're, if, you, if you, right. you manage to stick around, you are more than welcome. <laughs> um, well, one of, one of the other handy features of this band is... Um, I can, I can, there's a couple, I can set a couple locations to make it easier to come back to them. So, uh, I'm going to try my very best to stay here. I'm going to work on that and, uh, ooh, 
This is amazing. <laughs> I am so excited to be here. It was, wow, this is fortuitous. Uh, and she just kind of is beaming with excitement. I like her. This is great. <laughs> what other authors do you lack? Um, well, there's, um, there's a couple authors in the genre who are getting kind of popular. It's a newer genre, but, um, uh, there's Algrim Thimblefoot. Not a big fan of <laughs> his stuff. Um, to be honest, the only other author that tends to draw my attention is, um, Grungrax Krivenar. Uh, actually, he's from the Stration Empire, if I recall correctly, but he can be a little too dark. I like Luathra's... Really. Yeah. That's stuff myself. It's niche. I've tried it. It's really niche. Um, <laughs> Luathra strikes the balance, I think, a lot better. Um, you know, she can, she can stray a little bit into the dark, but tends to keep it in a little bit more of a neutral place. It's great. So I guess we just continue the chit chat yeah. as we eat mm -hmm. dinner. And, I mean, and, um, we didn't do it, but I assume we would have all introduced ourselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. As such. Uh, and yeah, you have this nice conversation with this incredibly over the top <laughs> individual <Surprise guest. laughs> who has come to set up a uh, wild magic shop here. How old would you say she was? Oh, like around, good question. Like um, around 20, 18, 19. 20. 19? She's young. Yeah. Um. And that was where I was envisioning ending the episode with meeting you here. You guys be good ending there? Yeah. Sure. Okay. Sure. Uh, thank you for playing. Thanks to those of you who came to watch. Uh, we'll be back with more of this Monday, 7 p.m. Pacific time. So that's that. Bye. 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 Bye.